Welcome back to The Watch. And uh, this video might seem a little out of the ordinary, but believe it or not, I actually have a lot to say regarding the uh, recent controversy between Stephen Crowder and The Daily Wire. If you're a bit out of the loop here, Stephen Crowder recently made a video uh, criticizing big conservative, uh, specifically in cer certain types of contractual terms that seem to more support big tech and their censorship. And he was giving an example from a certain contract. And it seemed, you know evident by just certain things that it was mentioning, like uh, the amounts of advertisers that the contract was stipulating stuff, that this contract could have been or likely was from the Daily Wire, which is now being confirmed because Jeremy Boring has responded to Stephen. And as a result, I actually have a lot to say. Uh, look, I've liked a lot of what Stephen Crowder has made. Same with Jeremy Boring. And uh, there are certain things that Stephen has done that I have felt admirable, but then there are things that he's done that's pissed me off. So I'm not doing this because uh, I love Stephen Crowder. Like I said, I respect the guy. I think he's done good work. And at the same side of this, uh, I really like some of the stuff that the Daily Wire have been doing. I love, you know, Jeremy's response to when he got cancelled by that shaving company. I thought that the response was absolutely baller. I love that they are pushing forward into making new media, especially film and TV. I think that's brilliant. And uh, it isn't my intention to burn any bridges with the Daily Wire. I have simply very strong opinions on specifically exploitative contracts and scummy business practices and the uh, the standard that has come out from Jeremy's kind of response video about this is just how business is done. I particularly, I, I've hated that notion for a long time, which is what has caused me to share my thoughts on it because it's front and center. The, the philosophy here is a lot of uh, the uh, responses Jeremy has made has essentially been saying this is standard business practices, What this was a good deal. And I, I, I hate that because I think he would agree with me on the underlining philosophy. Just because something is the way that it's done doesn't mean that it's right, justified, or should be continued, okay? Uh, no, something is scummy based on, you know, core principles and ethics are based on it. And there are some scummy things in that contract. And yes, I know Crowder wasn't actually sent a contract. It was a contract proposal to get the ball rolling. But that's entirely irrelevant. Because if Crowder signed off on these proposals without trying to renegotiate anything, you know that these exact conditions would be in the real contract as well. That, uh, I think, yes, uh, Crowder has had perfect valid right to take issue with and the interesting thing because i will be looking at jeremy's video here is jeremy basically acknowledges this okay is that um he said that they uh would have negotiated differently he was expecting negotiation negotiate differently which means he knew the contractual terms in that contract were unfair and this is the thing that pisses me off so much because it's a common thing in business standard business practices is that Usually one side is perfectly happy to take advantage of another if they can get away with it, which seems to be the standard business practice. And this is the scummy thing that I can't stand about this, right? If Crowder signed that contract without any um, differences and everything like that, the reality is Daily Wire would have taken that as a win. Most businesses would, and that is wrong, okay? Because he acknowledges at the end of his video that the contract was lowballing him, that they would have paid him more, and that he was expecting to negotiate differently, and that's not a good faith proposal, especially to a friend, okay? If you're dealing, like, if you're dealing with anyone, not even just friends, your proposal should all, like, the way I do it, best, you know, proposal, best case proposal, and, and I've learned this the hard way because... I realized how scummy it was from multiple different um, practices in the past. When I worked for Harvey Norman, and uh, I get the impression this is very much as even though I won't say, right? The, uh, sorry, selling TVs when I was at Harvey Norman. The year standard that was very much perpetuated uh, by management and into the salesman was basically take the customer for all they're worth. Like all the, uh, I can Harvey Norman, they will give you a discount if you ask for it, but if you don't ask for it, they will sell it to you at, you know, full retail price. And as a result, there are markups and everything. And then there are things that are insanely marked up that they push in incessantly. And if you could, if you could get away with it, good on you. You are a successful good salesman if you are able to rip off the customer and make them feel like they got a good deal. Then you're a great salesman. And that might be true in terms of the salesman, but it also means you're a scummy, dishonest person. And I hated that. I felt dirty working there. I was very happy to leave. 
And uh, also when negotiating sponsorship deals, okay? If a sponsor approaches me with just scummy contractual things from the get-go, they're not approaching me in good faith, and I reject them straight away and I won't negotiate because they have shown something that is very troubling from a business perspective. They are happy to rip you off if, you, if they could get away with it. That shows a dishonest attitude and that should not be the way business is done. Not at all. And just because, oh, they, you know, you're always trying low ball and everything and, that, and that's how you can get good deals in business. No, no, no. I, if you're actually being honest in business, you give the honest, fair, you know, proposal from the get-go and then you would expect no negotiation if it's truly fair because it's fair and then you have a good baseline if people are then trying to demand more uh, and all those things. And so for like sponsorships, there are just garbage dog crap things that uh, certain sponsors ask you for. I am lucky because my sponsors don't ask for that. This is why I trust them because they come forward with a fair, you know, good faith proposal. Unfortunately, that's the reality that you have to learn to deal with when uh, dealing with contracts. And when looking at the contract that the Daily Wire sent to Stephen Crowder, I do agree that there are some things that are completely unacceptable. And just because it's the way that things are done, no, 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 I, uh, that does not excuse it by any means. And it is, uh, I, uh, very, I guess, disingenuous. I don't think it's good at all that they were even considering to propose this to anyone, let alone a friend, okay? Especially when they, he, like Jeremy acknowledged that they would change it, that he knew that they were lowballing him and stuff. And the main things that um, uh, should be, well, we'll go through the video, but Stephen's main issue were was, uh, well, he was r responding to uh, the fact that he seemed to be getting penalized if his stuff gets demonetized. And uh, that is actually like, like Jeremy, he tries to respond that, well, if you're not making money for the business, how can we expect to, I'll, I'll address that as it comes up, but just generally over top here is, uh, well, you're not going to be paying Steven anymore if he does something that suddenly gets a trillion views, okay, and suddenly he provides vastly more benefits to what the contract was initially based upon, the value proposition that you proposed to him, but you're willing to penalize that amount if it gets less. Okay, same thing with um, the sponsorship kind of thing. That's not fair. It's not balanced. And so the way that you do it is that you keep that payment flat, just like with sponsorships. If the video gets, well, it's silly. Luckily, with the, uh, the reasonable sponsors that I work with, if the video does get underneath by maybe 20%, uh, even 30% sometimes, they don't demand a follow-up video. Because I think they do, uh, like with my regular sponsors, they understand that it balances out by the other videos that overshoot it, okay? And I have a lot of videos that overshoot that uh, view guarantee, but I don't get paid more for it. Uh, but that should be, uh, I, I, if you're not going to be paying more for greater success, you should not penalize for getting under. You just, this is the, the, the value you're proposing. And... Uh, let the chips lay where they are. That's the, the risk of m negotiating. And so putting in such stipulations that will lessen the amount payable to Stephen. Uh, and especially that it's based upon stuff that you want to build on top of, like stuff that Stephen isn't even doing yet. Like I'm um, mentioning documentaries and things that the, you're calculating that into the value. That's technically value that doesn't exist because Crowder isn't making documentaries. The money that you should be offering him is the value of uh, the licensing, making the regular standards, uh, you know, Crowder content and everything. And if you want to propose making new content that's outside of the scope of what Crowder regularly does, that almost should be either a percentage split based on the profits of this new content or separate to the contract entirely. But anyway, we'll go through specifically uh, the video and I will respond in kind to the things that I want to talk about. Our friend Stephen Crowder has launched a new initiative called Stop Big Con. And in the video announcing the launch of the project, he talked about leaving the blaze and all the different offers that he filled it from other conservative organizations and what he thought were the real problems with those offers. And that's led a lot of people to speculate about whether or not the Daily Wire is one of the people who made him an offer. In particular, are we the ones who made the offer uh, that he put up on the screen and talked about um, at length? And the answer is yes, that offer did come from the Daily Wire. Uh, I'm not trying to hide that fact. I'm not ashamed of that fact. In fact, I think it's a very good offer. All right, see, no. <laughs> It's not a good offer, and there's a part at the end of the video where Jeremy says that 
that he were expecting to need to pay more, where, where it's acknowledgement that he knowingly was lowballing it and uh, it wasn't constructed well. So I don't, this is not a true statement. It's not a good offer. And uh, for a number of reasons, uh, as we'll continue going to. I'm really miserable to be making this video. Stephen's been my friend for uh, 10 years. I think he's maybe the most talented person working in the conservative uh, media. I believe Jeremy's sincerity when he does this. Like I said, there are many things that I like about Jeremy and many things that are done. And there are many things that I really like about The Daily Wire. But just because I like that doesn't mean I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, not call out bull crap when I see it, especially in scummy contract stuff like this. And what I actually think is... Uh, I, Jeremy isn't the only person that I come across where you just do business the way it's been done and then they basically get fooled into thinking that it's moral and justified because everyone else is doing it and that's just business. No. no. And so I would like to think that if Jeremy was to take a step back and actually try and look at the, the balance kind of what's being offered, what's being given and stuff like that, he could acknowledge that some of these things in this contract really are crappy and he kind of already admitted this at the end of the video when he says that he was willing to go higher and that he was expecting the negotiation. And, and again, that, that's evidence and proof right there that they proposed a crappy contract that Jeremy acknowledged right from the get-go. And that's not approaching uh, a negotiation in good faith in my mind. I know that a lot of businesses have done that way, but that does, isn't an excuse at all. All right. Uh, if you really respect and you want to offer a genuinely a good deal, you offer the good fair deal first and foremost, not with the expectation that it's going to have to be negotiated, go up higher and things. I've wanted to be in business with Stephen since the day that I met him. Uh, ben and I tried to do some even movie deals with Stephen before there was a uh, CRTV and before there was. Interesting thing. I, I Daily Wire is one of the only uh, like independent conservative kind of um, outlets that are making film and stuff. And I wish there were more people doing it. But if they aren't, honestly, I, it would be great if, uh, you know, to be able to work with them to produce something in the future with my properties. I'm an author and all, all that stuff. So well, I possibly very well could be burning the bridge here. But I hope they don't take it that way. This is just like... <laughs> Andrew, Andrew Claven, I love you, mate. All right. You were wrong about women and swords. I made multiple videos on it. I was that guy. All right. I, I hold nothing against it. We had a difference of opinion, even though this one has more moral, moral and ethical kind of uh, concerning things in reality. Doesn't like you can still like people even when you disagree or think they've done things that are morally questionable. All right? I still like Jeremy. I still like the Daily Wire. It's up to them if they want to burn bridges with me, but I'm always open to collaborating and stuff in the future. It'll just be interesting to see. And I hope, like, it would be sad if the bridges are burned between Stephen and Jeremy. And what what are the interesting takeaways? Stephen didn't mention it was the Daily Wire. If you looked closely, there were some pretty clear signs that it were it was, but he didn't go out to try and burn the bridges. The actual fact, he says, I hope whoever, you know who I'm talking to, that you will uh, do the right thing. And basically what I'm saying is that you'll fix up your contracts and start uh, proposing things that uh, basically take away oh, your creator's freedoms uh, in terms of making separate kind of content um, that might not be the same. I like that. We'll get to that part. All right, but these are extremely draconian controlling contract that I would never sign in a million years. Holy crap. So maybe I would never be able to work with the Daily Wire if that's the type of thing that they'd want to do in terms of uh, collaborations in producing, you know, film, TV and whatnot. But I don't think Stephen was wanting to burn any bridges. It was clear like a, sh a shot across the bow, but he didn't name any names. Uh, and I think Jeremy's actually the one here who is fanning the flames of conflict between the two saying that it's Stephen that wanted to, uh, you know, rake us over the coals when he didn't name you by name. He wasn't raking you publicly over the coals, even though you said, I, I mentioned that you could ensure it was them, but people were thinking that it was Fox, that it was many other outlets that it could very well likely have been them. Okay. And I opened, I had that possibility open my mind as well. And so, uh, seeing daily wise confirmation is just like, oh, okay, so confirm my suspicions, but they were just suspicions at that point. By making it public, well, I think stuff like, like these contracts need to be cast into the abyss from the mind of, let's say, came up, right? Because they're garbage contracts that take way too much freedom away from individuals, lock them into sometimes just for a whole number of things, okay? These contracts do need to improve, and especially in terms of the actual main criticism 
Crowder had, okay, which was about the, penaliz- the supposed penalization and reinforcing of uh, the uh, um, censorship and uh, and uh, strikes and things. And Jeremy's um, response to that I didn't find satisfying. Okay, we'll get to that. But those are the main criticisms. Those are the things that should change if you're going to be going into contractual negotiations going forward. And to try and get change in the industry, you do need to make, uh, you know, a fuss. You need to... Uh, expose the issues publicly. And Stephen's agent candidly just wasn't interested in any aspect of that conversation. He only wanted to know about the money. He said, you know, we're not gonna have a conversation. We're not gonna have some abstract talk. We're gonna send us an offer. Tell us how much money you're willing to pay. And he gave us an indication of what the minimum number would have to be in order to even have a discussion with Stephen. And it's a big number. So, Uh, like, You, of course, it starts with the money. Like with any sponsorship offer, if they lowball me, so it doesn't matter how generous other contractual terms. Like, well, you get, you have freedom with the uh, you know talking points, and uh, you can make it a ten second you know integration versus thirty seconds. Like, if it's crazy lowball, it's like no, <laughs> okay. Um, you you do find you know where your worth is and what you offer and stuff, and just like charging someone too much is wrong, okay? A client coming to you and expecting to get way more views and exposure for the advertisement than what they're offering you is also wrong, all right? Uh, You you need to pay what the market value naturally is. So, and it sounds like an agent being an agent. um, That's like, and already it seems like the agent stated a number that Daily Wire instantly lowballed and then they're surprised that Stephen, you know, doesn't want to negotiate after. Well, that's the impression I get. So we talked about it internally and, and we decided, yeah, we should do that. We should send over uh, an, an opening offer, a, a non-binding term sheet that takes a stab at what we think that that minimum number is going to be. I think take a stab at what you think the minimum number is. Didn't the agent say what the minimum number was? So you don't need to take a stab at it. So what this is really saying is that you did go under what the minimum number, what the agent was asking for to get the conversation started so that we can sit down with Steven so that we can see if uh, if there's a deal they'd be good. To get the conversation started by knowingly lowballing him and making a draconian contract, that's not how you would start a conversation in good faith. Yeah, I, I, I would be pissed off as well if someone, if, if my expectation was a conversation in good faith and they lowball what the, you know, reasonable market value that if I did set it at, at I don't know what this figure was that um, Crowder uh, mentioned, he does mention later on, not, not Crowder, but uh, Boring mentions later on about a minimum figure, but that was over a conversation. And uh, I don't know if it's the same as what the agent was saying. So, uh, but anyway, if if the first offer isn't even, you know, the minimum that you have said that you feel your market value is, as like, oh, well, and especially it's crazy under, that's not approaching in good faith. Good for him and good for us. And, and that's what we did. We, we put together the term sheet, we sent it over, uh, and we asked if we could get on the phone and have a conversation with Stephen. And look, I'm not saying that having different views on what the standard market value is is wrong, okay? Uh, and it feels like Daily Wire, honestly, I know that I was going to say it feels like they knew what the standard market value is for Crowder would be. And if that was true, I could understand their sincerity here. But Jeremy later on says that they were expecting to need to go higher, which means that they weren't offering the standard market value. This non binding term sheet sets forth the basic deal points of a proposed content production and distribution agreement between the Daily Wire. Okay, so it's a non-binding term sheet, so it's actually not a contract. But the thing is, if Stephen came back and said, yeah, I like all of it, put it into a binding contract that we could sign, Daily Wire said, oh, they wouldn't have come out and said, oh, we didn't actually expect you to agree to these crazy terms. No, no, we're definitely going to pay you more and give you more flexible things. They would have accepted it out of the gate. They sweet, we just scored a massive talent for a crazy low price. And they wouldn't have mentioned anything to him and said, oh, yeah, sure, here's the new contract to sign it. So to try and say that, oh, it's non-binding meant that we never at any point um, would have accepted, would have agreed, you'd been happy that you accepted these terms is bullcrap. No, no, come off it. LLC, a Texas limited liability company, and Stephen Crowder via his loan out Uh, so that if and when the parties elect to move forward with a long-form agreement, 
they can move quickly in preparing a definitive and binding agreement. Exactly. So if they want to move forward with a long form agreement, so if you like everything on here, we we will just go forward and accept all these terms as part of the contract right away. That's just legalese that means uh, this is just a conversation starter and we're obviously going to have a negotiation. You were you were thinking that, but you, you knew like that. Like, we're obviously going to have a negotiation. You'd be surprised if he accepted all those terms, but you would have accepted the terms if he did. And you were like, "Well, oh, negotiation." Like this is what I this is one of the things that I find really scummy. Okay, is that if a, uh, any business that is willing to take advantage of someone else based on their lack of knowledge, their own ignorance, or or not being aware of their own value, okay, when they could have demanded more, seems pretty scummy to me. Uh, if we move forward and a lot of these points are going to get beat up. And for those of you who've never been through a contract negotiation, then, well, that's how it works. When you, when you send someone an offer, you don't send them uh, everything that you're willing to say yes to. Bull crap. Because guess what? That's what I do, okay? I make several contracts. I have multiple employees, all right? And yes, I don't lowball them. I send what the standard thing is. And yes, there has been sometimes negotiations, but sometimes there hasn't been. And because sometimes a lot of the negotiations, when they come back, they don't like, because this is the best offer and we know it's a fair offer, it's like, no, we're not moving on. Like, literally, this is it. And there's an interesting discussion and a parallel I can also bring up that's actually something that's in this contract that I exclude in my own contracts, okay? And it's also a point of evidence to show that um, the business standard is the more scummy controlling thing that I purposely don't do. And it's in this contract that the Daily Wire has. So no, not everyone does it, okay? And not everyone should do it. When you approach a contract, the honest an honorable thing is to actually offer the fair value first so that when people accept it right out of the gate, you don't inadvertently or worse, purposely take advantage of them where you're basically screwing them up the ass without them knowing. Because there is going to be a negotiation because agents... Not always. Not everyone has an agent. Not everyone understands contract law. Not everyone understands their value. Lawyers are going to get involved because you can't read their mind. You don't know everything that will be important to them and everything that they'll want. You don't know even... Look, that's that part is disingenuous because it is true. Sometimes there are things that you couldn't preempt in what the other party wants that they want in their contract and you add it in. And so that's, that's normal, all right? But we're actually talking about kind of base level things that you honestly think are like the person's value. Jeremy's basically saying you always offer something less than what they are actually valued at, okay? You always try and cheat them because you expect that they'll negotiate, but you know if they don't end up negotiating, you get to cheat them and it's now in contract and you got away with it legally. You know, some of their sort of non-negotiable uh, points. And so you send over a, a loose offer and then they're going to beat it up a little bit. They're going to say, well, this should be higher and this should be lower. And you're going to come back and How many people don't do that without knowing who are, there are so many like creatives that don't understand contracts and stuff where, and they don't understand their market value. And they just think, oh, this is, this is what you're offering. I don't think, and they don't, they aren't aware of the power they have to negotiate that they, they are sometimes unaware that they could go other places and they just end up signing their lives away and get locked into these scummy contracts that they don't have control over to get out of legally at least, or they'll, or if they try it, or if they do break it, then they suffer severe penalties say, no, we're going to stand firm here, but we're willing to compromise there. And over time, you either get to a deal or you don't get to a deal. But that that's how a good faith negotiation always works. <laughs> no! And I can't believe he says always. You always try and cheat the person you're negotiating with by offering so low because you expect to negotiate higher. Bull freaking crap. This is the freaking thing I can't stand about this. It's so disingenuous. It's just flat out wrong. 100% of every uh, interaction I've ever had with any talent, that's the process. Hundred percent. That's essentially saying, Jeremy, hundred percent of every talent you've worked with, you've tried to cheat them on the first offer. But then he says you've always negotiated above that. But I guarantee there were people that didn't negotiate as much as others and accepted worse terms than others and stuff. And the scummy business perspective is like, 
got away with it. You know, that was their fault for them not knowing their, you know, value and uh, what they could have negotiated for and stuff. Uh, and so here we go. Here was our offer. A four-year initial term with two-year renewal at DW's sole discretion. All right. That sounds like Daily Wire has the right to renew What's the contract. Offer? So hang on. Let's a four-year initial term. This sounds like Daily Wire's sole discretion. They can renew this, okay? Okay, after two years. After two years. Crowder doesn't have the right to... Uh, say no after two years. This isn't working out. It's only Daily Wire's sole discretion. So already this is friggin' one-sided. Absolutely, Crowder should have every right to pull out a contract that's not working for him after two years. And <laughs> Daily Wire have said, oh, no, 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 if you want to pull out, but we're liking how things are going, it's our sole discretion to keep, continue the contract after these two years and complete the full four years. I friggin' can't stand that. Sponsors have tried, not my current sponsors, so um, uh, Hello Fresh, brilliant, brilliant, Audible have been really good to me as well, a Campfire and stuff, right? And But other sponsors that I don't end up going with because they've been just offered this crappy terms and everything, have tried to say that they have the right to pull out a contract whenever they wish, but not me. And I was like, this is bull crap. No, no, no. You will add into the contract if we're ever going to be doing anything that... Both the client and the talent have equal rights to pull out of the contracts under the same conditions as each other for breach of contract or anything like that. So it's this is just, it's a scummy but common contractual thing that shouldn't be accepted. It gives all the power to Daily Wire and nothing to Crowder that he could be locked in for four years and they have the right to freedom to pull out after two years. Term with two-year renewal at DW's sole discretion. Sole discretion. That just means Stephen's going to work for DW for four years. Uh, and if it's going really well, DW can retain him for an additional two years. Oh, it's an additional two years after the four years? That's even worse! So Crowder has no right to say, I want to end after the four years. So only Daily Wire has the sole discretion to take away his freedom and say, no, nah, no. Nah. We are raking in so much. I mean, you know, we, we signed this, they say 50 million, but we're making like 200 million off of you now. Like, you're not going anywhere. And we are, you have, do not have any discretion to pull out. We can get extended another two years. Screw what you want. Two, uh, the fee. And he moves on after that. And so people who are not aware of contract, the, I, I just, the contract, contractual language like this might have heard that. It's like, oh, well, that, that seems fine. No, only Daily Wire has that right. Crowded doesn't. That's scummy as hell. Remember, this is the, the minimum number. Uh, Already, if I read that, that's one of the first things in the contract, I would have told it to piss off. Because it, it, it sets a standard that they are willing to try and get all the benefit and advantages in the contract and deny me similar but fair, you know, things in the contract. And if I wasn't aware of it, they would take advantage of me and screw me over. And that's the first thing. That's the first. That would be such a massive red flag for me right there that we thought would get the conversation started with Stephen. $50 million for the initial term, plus $25 million for the renewal term, if extended, paid in monthly installment. So, what I dislike about this figure, one, Stephen never complained about the money. He didn't, he didn't mention it in his video. I do get the impression and feeling, oh, well, uh, it's confirmed by Jeremy later that uh, Stephen expected much, much more. And so he had an issue with it, but he didn't make a public thing out of that. That wasn't the main complaint that he wanted to raise in regards to it. The other thing is, Daily Wire is continually trying to say that this is a huge figure and it, almost to the point, if you guys think I'm incorrect about this, uh, I think that's fair. But my impression feels like that they're trying to say that it's greedy from Stephen to turn down such crazy amounts of money. And from a standard perspective, that's insane amounts of money, but it's a matter of perspective, okay? Crowder probably has the potential to earn way more than that. And I know there's, you know, um, uh, talk that he's lost access to his mug club, mug club that was tied in with the blaze and he has to start again from scratch. But if you think he can't build up a very sizable following just on mug, mug club membership to the order of mul several million annually, okay, and we're talking lots, like between 20 and 30 million, 
you probably don't understand his support and his reach. And that's just from Mug Club support, let alone the f- like the single sponsorship that he does in you know the occasional video, but a sponsorship in a video that gets a million views. Did anyone does anyone realize how much money that you get on those types of sponsorships? It's like at least a hundred thousand, if not way more. Okay. In a video, and, and Stephen has, like, his videos get between 500,000 and a million, usually around the 500,000 mark on YouTube, okay? And so, already, just on the first year, just on vague speculation, we can expect Crowder to be earning quite a chunk towards that 50 million on his own. And this is 50 million, right? For four years. And even if I'm wrong, even if, like, the Mug Club memberships only ends up uh, 10 years for this first year, okay? Try 10 million for the first year. That's still 40 million over a four-year period. And if you include even just one sponsorship a video, you've hit that 50 million mark, okay? Just in my uninformed opinion, I can see this as a, as a very low figure. That's why it's a matter of perspective, okay? And not only are they expecting this 50 million to cover the, the value of all his back catalogue, Every single video, they get a license to every single video of the past. This isn't just starting afresh with the content that is making from the beginning of the contract. They get license to host all, everything is made on the Daily Wire, which is already a huge value right there. And then on top of that, this is not just paying for mug clubs, memberships and sponsorships for the four year period of the contract and then the standard sponsorships, they want to milk him like a, or no, suck him dry like a vampire for every single thing they want to make um, documentaries with him. They want to flood his videos and, and live streams with crazy amounts of sponsorship content and, and also demanding uh, like volume of content as well. And all these things, right, on... And this is stuff that's beyond and above the standard type of content that he normally makes. And that's also included in this $50 million figure. It's like, to me, I would be like, that's nowhere near the value (laughs) that not only what what they're covering, what they're getting, but the fact that they're expecting and demanding him to make more content in addition. Oh, by the merchandising rights, they get all the merchandising rights. Holy crap. And so like this... In my perspective, this 50 million does not seem to cover nearly the value of, because this isn't just content, it's the brand, it's the merchandising, it's it's everything. It's like they want his friggin' soul. And they're also denying any possibility, like, possibility of him making separate content. They're like, oh, we can do interviews and stuff, but no, they're not going to let him make separate side content, additional YouTube channels or videos or anything like that. There's a full-on non-complete clause in this, and I'll talk a bit more about that. Like I say, a a pretty big number. uh, Depending on perspective. But we thought for a talent like Steven, this is probably the the minimum number that's going to get us in the door so that we can sit down and talk to him. (laughs) the minimum number it's another acknowledgement that you know that uh, like if you're thinking about you know proposing um, a deal to someone if if you have a minimum that means you also have a middle and you have over the top okay and the fair one would usually be the middle number not the minimum number which is another acknowledgement that this wasn't a fair offer three production costs uh, this is important. We, we've never made a deal quite like the offer that we put in front of Stephen because Stephen, very independent guy. I mean, uh, all of our... <sighs> it, oh, to me, this is... <sighs> anyway, you'll hear it. Talent have very independent voices. Obviously, we can't tell them what to say. You know, Candace says what she wants and Jordan Peterson says what he wants, Ben, Michael. Uh, but Stephen has always built in this protection for himself that that he wants to actually produce his content. He doesn't want, you know, most of most of our guys, they come to the studio and we turn on the cameras. We point the cameras, we point the lights. Steven likes to do that with his own team uh, to just make doubly sure that no one's interfering with his content, not that we would. And so we anticipated that and we said, Crowder will bear the burden of production. Including all costs, so I'll let it including finish. all costs associated therewith on all the content contemplated herein, except on the quarterly and annual content contemplated below. 
Holy crap. To frame this condition in the contract as we just wanted to give him the freedom to make his own stuff and he would have control is insanity, okay? Not, you are forcing him to bear the cost of production, not the freedom, okay? Where you want to get all the profit and he has to bear the cost. Like, holy crap. So, basically, Stephen has to pay for all the production out of the money that he gets paid from the Daily Wire after the fact. And so he produces the content, content, Daily Wire gets it, they make a little profit, Stephen gets paid in return, and then that has to make up the loss of the production after the fact. That's insane. And to frame that, like, oh, it's just to give you free... What, what I hate even more about this part, right... He seems to be framing like there was just no other way. Well, our hands were tied. He wants the freedom, so we have to put in this clause. To give it. You didn't say, of course you could say that Daily Wire will cost the cost, uh, cover the cost of production, but Stephen Crowder will retain the rights of creative control over everything he produces, okay? It's that friggin' simple! But to frame it like this was the only way to give Crowder the creative control over his content... To for by forcing him to bear the brunt of all the production costs while you get all the profit and only pay him the contractually stipulated thing, even if he makes a video that gets an insane amount, suddenly, look, hypothetically, I know, but, but what if a video just goes nuts and suddenly gets, I don't know, a billion trillion, something crazy, break happen, but something Stephen did cause an insane amount of revenue increase, okay? He's not going to get it paid any more. He's only going to get paid the flat contractual amount, and he still had to bear the cost of production for it. <sighs> I like Jeremy, okay? I, I like the Daily Wire, but this contract is friggin' dog crap. Oh, well, we'll get to that part uh, a little bit later. It's kind of a novel concept. Uh, the quality of the production will be as good as or better and is currently existing. Who, uh, who determines that? The Daily Wire determines that. Okay. Um, sometimes things need a change based on what you're capable of producing. I've experienced this with my own content, Shadowversity. Okay. I suffer from chronic fatigue. I literally had to change the type of content in such a way that I can maintain it more easily. One of the reasons Night's Watch is framed the way it is because it's much easier to produce this type of content. And uh, I've just had to make less content on Shadowversity because it's really hard to maintain the production schedule because of my energy and health things. They talk about sickness, but what if something more permanent um, changes where instead of lowering the quality, it needs to be a shift in quality, but Daily Wire determines that as a lessening of quality, okay? They're, like, exactly, who's going to determine the quality of production? It will be the Daily Wire, and what if Crowder actually thinks it's a genuine improvement, and it very well might be, but Daily Wire liked the way it was done before, and this is a clear reduction in quality, and Crowder would have no freedom or control over his content, okay? Interesting content. This just, again, Stephen's going to produce his own content. It has to be as good as the stuff uh, that Stephen's audience has come to expect from him, um, and that'll come out of the 50 million. So it's not, like, it's not like all of that 50 million goes right in Stephen's pocket. He's going to use some of it to pay for the production, like, like you say. Producers and, and studio space and camera uh, equipment and operate. And so he can't in really increase the quality then because it comes directly out of his pocket and he, not, he isn't going to get any more money by improving the content, uh, co uh, content now because the amount of money he gets in return is locked in and, it, and the production cost gets taken out of that. And so if he, if he wanted to launch like a new segment, change the set, improve the set or anything like that, he just ends up making less money as a result. There is no incentive in this content, in this contract, for him to make better and more content at all. Raiders and lights, uh, just like we're going to use some of you know, the money that we make to pay for the... No, no, no. If you're making all the benefits for greater success, um, uh, like if something goes crazy or anything like that, hell yeah, you should be covering the cost of production, Okay. Like that stipulation is insane. That's another one where I'll be really like that. Just that one thing alone would be a deal breaker. Infrastructure and the technology and the uh, marketing and the legal and all the other parts that go into making a successful business. Hang on. Like 
that's expected. And some of that costs, like infrastructure and stuff like that, most of the views come from YouTube, which is infrastructure you don't need to pay for. So look, I get that Daily Wire has their own platform and everything, but the actual exposure and reach you're getting off platform, which for a lot of the off your own personal, your own private platform, I mean, and for a lot of it, you don't need to pay for that. Revenue collection that says we'll have the exclusive right to realize revenue in connection with all of his content and brand. Full control, full control, not a single cent that Crowder makes through his entire content and brand goes, it all gets through the Daily Wire first. We're paying you this guaranteed significant amount of- He, he mentions that a lot, it's significant, it's significant. When he knows it's low ball, it's significant to the average person. And so by framing that, right, the average person thinks, well, who would turn down such a significant amount of money? And for me, $50 million is significant, but for someone like Crowder, no, that's actually not, not for covering cost of production, all the overheads, all the staff that he has to do, considering the amount that he can go in, in reality, it actually looks like an insulting figure to propose for him for the level of business where he's at. But by constantly saying it's so significant to the average person, which it is, right, it really feels like there's this subtle undertone of he's greedy. He would be greedy to turn down this offer. Don't you think he's greedy? No money, $50 million. Uh, and for that, one of the things we're buying is the content, but we're also buying the right to monetize the content so that we can have a chance of making some money and not just... I find it so interesting that they uh, said we well, well we would, couldn't do a revenue split with him. That would just would be un. He mentions it later on, and I will be able to get his full wording. Because to me, a revenue split seems like the vastly fairer kind of proposition with the actual money and figures that you're dealing with here. But anyway, spending money. What is the content? First, we broke this into daily, monthly, quarterly, and annual content. The daily content is going to be very obvious to you. He'll deliver a one and a half hour Louder with Crowder audio video show of a quality and kind consistent with the shows that he's currently producing four days a week. That's 192 original episodes a year if you factor in four weeks uh, of vacation. Including all ad reads and promotions as requested by the... They don't state the amount of ad reads. They just say all ad reads. Holy crap. Daily Wire, like if you watched their content, they're... You should know if you have, they're notorious for huge amounts of ad reads. They load them up. I don't have anything against them per se, so long as the, you know, um, they're promoting good businesses and stuff and they've tried to do their due diligence and all those things. Uh, as, you know, good old capitalism and everything. But there, there's a line, I think even as a regular viewer, where you can see it's starting to get a bit, you know, laying it on a bit thick, right? And they do not state any amount as a limit for ad reads per thing. What if it ends up being 10, 15, 20, right? They could force, well, this contract seems to give them the freedom uh, to force it unless something else um, states it otherwise further into. But holy crap, again, this would be a deal breaker. I'll be like, no way would I sign something that gives you freedom to put unlimited ads in my content that I would have no ability to say otherwise. All ad reads and promotions as requested by the Daily Wire. They just have to request it. You must do it. Now, in terms of the level of content, oh, look, that seems fair enough. That they are like standard level of content because they're they're trying to purchase the same, or well, they should be trying to do this, the same kind of um, production output uh, that Crowder has already shown himself capable of doing, and they want to ensure that level of output for the contractual period. That seems all right. But one thing that's very disingenuous is to say that it's only going to require 192 days of work in a year to produce that content is friggin' insane bullcrap. Wait for uh, it. Including all ad reads and promotions as requested by us. So he's going to continue to produce his show, his, his Louder with Crowder show, four days a week, 192 times a year. Uh, and that'll include us being able to put ads in it and promotions in it. As requested, that he doesn't have any right to be able to turn down even if you decide to put 50. And... What if it's a product ad that I think they might mention that they might have ability to object to certain ad reads, but no, I think they only mentioned that they can object to it if they have, um, uh, I don't know, uh, interest in a competing product to the one being advertised or something. We'll get there. They'll be filmed in studio daily, Monday through Thursday, at least one hour. Monday through Thursday. I, I hate this as well. Like 
no, no, no. If you're going to say you want a bare minimum um, of, uh, what is it? Four, one, 1. 1.5 hour episodes, four days a week. So four episodes a week. You don't have the right to tell me which days I decide to produce those episodes. Piss off. I will produce the content that the contract is asking for and it'll reach the quality standard that you expect. But I will, I'm allowed to produce them however the way I want that's within the bounds of the law to achieve that. As long as I meet those fair requirements, the quality level and output, doesn't, it's not your freaking concern how or when I produce it. Because every Monday through Thursday, piss off. Of them will be outside the paywall. Um, all right, so I think there's already kind of content that Crowder does that. Uh, no, outside the air, yeah, because he, he posts his content, well, you know, one a week or so um, uh, on YouTube. That's much how Stephen already operates. Mm -hmm. That's the part that goes out on podcasting. It's the part that goes out on YouTube. It's the part that goes out on Rumble. And at least 30 minutes inside the, D the DW Plus paywall. I don't think that's unreasonable. Um, actual... Uh, Content behind paywall, I think, is similar to what so, Stephen does. In the same way that right now he has his piss off YouTube segment uh, that has historically been at and yeah, our paywall. The same thing. Uh, Crowder can bank or pre-record a limited number of episodes upon our approval and reasonable discretion. Um, days without new original episodes will be scheduled in advance, subject to our reasonable. <sighs> how how many? Like I I I agree that it could go to a point where it would be unreasonable, where he like you know pre-records I I you know. Uh, he, he does double episodes every single day and then he ends up banking, I don't know, four months worth of content. Crowder's content is very much reliant on reaction of what's happening in the current thing. And so, yes, there should be more freedom in uh, based on health conditions, personal stuff, and everything like that uh, to give Crowder the ability to determine when, how many uh, um stored up, especially, you know, if he wants to do two on one day and it's, you know, you know talk about specific things in a certain week, he should have that freedom. What's this about? Well, like I like Crowder, you know, in addition to his four weeks of vacation, there's just also going to be time. All right. Four weeks vacation. Hang on. Sorry. Times where he, for whatever reason, maybe he's got a speech, maybe he's got a stand up comedy gig somewhere around the country. If yep, he were to yep, come to find fine. the maximum flexibility to still make the episodes but for Stephen to be able to live the other important parts of his life. 192 episodes. Uh, obviously, there are 260 work days in a year. Most Americans work 260 days a year minus 10. That's two weeks of vacation. So they work about 250 work days a year. And we're telling Stephen, you've got to produce 192. So there are going to be, you know, 60 days, basically, of the year where uh, Fridays, we call them, where Stephen basically doesn't have to produce uh, a show. He's framing that like, therefore, he is not working on that day. And therefore, he's only working, you know, however many days of the year equivalent to the amount of shows we're requiring, which is insane. It's absolutely... You, you, of course, like, he is working way more outside of just the days of production in terms of managerial crap you got to deal with, planning and prep work and dealing with overheads and stuff like that. I run two YouTube channels and I'm basically always working. Just because he says, oh, you're only got so many shows in a year it means you don't have to work all these other days. It really feels like that's the framing here. And that is, it, it's so insane. Not a friggin' chance. And then he's saying, it's not unreasonable for us to demand this level um, because you've got all this other free time when to produce those shows. <laughs> And look, it's clear Crowd is an insane workaholic, and uh, you can tell by how stressed and overworked he looks sometimes. Um, just outside of the the production, or not, oh, that is the production, but outside of the filming of the show. <sighs> and you may say, well, that's still a lot. And I know Stephen says that's more than even, you know, network TV would, uh, would ask for. Yeah, these are points that can be negotiated. I still think most people feel like, you know, if you're only working four days a week, uh, and you get four weeks off every- He is framing it that way! He literally, he's framing it like Steve is only working four days a week to produce these four shows a week. Are you insane? There is so much additional work outside of it, separate to this for the production of those shows. Like, Shadowversity produces one, on average, to two videos a week, and that's nearly just a full-time job alone. And then we've got Night's Watch, production of graphic novels, to the point where I'm basically working all the friggin' time. All right?
And it's good that you get satisfaction out of work and everything. But uh, I, to frame it that way is such disingenuous crap. Come on, Jeremy. I like you, but this is friggin' bull crap. Every year, and you can pre-schedule even additional time to be traveling by banking episodes. You would at least say, you may think, well, he needed to negotiate that and get it down to 170 or something. Sure, I thought he would, but it's certainly not un... Another one where I thought, that, you know, he would negotiate uh, down on things, meaning that this was once again a dog crap offer that, you, and you knew it was dog crap because you were expecting him to negotiate different. It's fair to expect someone that is making $50 million over the next four years to, you know, work 192. It's not fair to expect someone who is only getting paid $50 million, who is actually producing content that's worth $200 million only working that amount of time in the year. That, that would suddenly be not fair, would it? Okay. To actually be fair would be to calculate all the the overall total of what is working and then divide that by how, how many work days to be out of prison. Anyway, so again, to frame that it is just un like it's completely fair no matter what for anyone to be out of work this amount of time for $50 million is just ignoring the context completely about how much value they're actually... If Crowder did one show that earned $100 million, okay, he would be entitled to only work that one show in the entire year and demanding that he works more and is only getting paid and then he gets paid less than the amount he's actually doing would be unreasonable. Uh, what is monthly content? Well, you know, at Daily Wire, our members uh, are entitled to an all access uh, once a month with most of our talent. Uh, and that's where our members get to interact with them, sort of one-on-one, -on -one, ask them questions. So we're saying once a month, he would have to do a 90 minute all access and any promotions and ad reads that would go in that. Right now, there are no ad reads in all access, but- <laughs> Doesn't mean that you won't put them in. And look, in terms of having an all access thing, this is, I, I, I could see it reasonable for someone asking, this wouldn't be like a scummy cheat thing that, uh, that this asking in, but this would be something for if they propose it to me where they wouldn't really know my perspective or preempt what that is. Because to me, the offer is purchasing what I am currently producing, my show, my brand and other things like that. And this is demanding that I do something in addition to what I feel you're you're not paying, you're paying for merchandising rights, all these, like the, the, the type of content brand that I'm currently doing currently at. That's the value that you're offering. But what's really, what I hate about this contract is that it's actually the money that they're offering is to cover additional content above and beyond and what Crowder is, makes just standard and regularly. And that if he doesn't do that, he then gets paid less. It's friggin' outrageous. I'd, I get, I'd, I'd tell him to piss off. But again, you're giving yourself, it's a four, possibly six year deal. You're giving yourself a little latitude for things to change. Quarterly content. Uh, we asked that Stephen would produce one major promo video and photo shoot uh, coordinated by us for his content at the company. You know, we Promo seems more reasonable than like a, a monthly commitment where you have to do additional content. Or, you know, like a promo, and a thing. I could say like, all right, well, it's more than what I usually do, but I could say uh, that one I could be willing to accept. Would want him to not like that at for anything now. Four times a year, come in and make a a very well produced promo. Very well that gives us marketing asset. Four times a year, yeah, that's mm. that's to be able to go out and uh, and and sell subscriptions, sell Mug Club, uh, sell any merch that we were doing with him, sell the the entire idea of DW plus. Uh, uh, see, I'd have an issue if they're expecting you to promo stuff that you might not approve of. And if the contract stipulated that I have no choice for these promos, I therefore have to promo all these other things that Daily Wire wants me to promo. And one backstage episode a quarter or other major live event and VIP experience. So, uh, and annual content. This was a new concept. We said- All right, so I would have an issue with this. Stephen would do one feature length entertainment special. That's like a stand up comedy special. And that Stephen would do one feature length political special. And that's like, um, a so it's two things. Documentary, like What is a Woman? You know this is something we're doing with all of our talent now. Uh, you saw it first with What is a Woman with Matt. And then in addition to his daily show, he, he brought us this amazing... So these are feet... Uh, one is at least a feature-length big production, okay? And to think that that's included in that $50 million sum and covered by just flatly, it, and that Stephen doesn't get a revenue share uh, depending on the success of this feature-length production is insanity, okay? 
it, uh, like the the feature length productions, what was woman was really successful. Okay, the main you know star in it or anything like that. That the fact that that is included in this contract with all the other things that Daily Wire is demanding is insanity. No, that thing would be a separate contract entirely, and and not even covered by it. Not even that because the fifty million I think is slowballing just for the standard. Crowder, you know, mug club, merchandising rights, back catalog, licensing. Holy crap. And they're like, it included in that, you have to help be a primary person producing a feature length thing and you won't get a single cent extra for it. Piss off. Uh, documentary. Um, you saw it with Candace with Greatest Lie Ever Sold. Uh, and we've got a lot more projects like that in the work with our other talent and, now. And by the way, I love those projects, okay? I hate that I have to go in so hard because I like The Daily Wire, I like Jeremy, but this crap needs to be called out because there is such freaking bull crap here. It's really become an important part of our business model. Here's, here's and, and you could produce some insanely successful things with Crowder on board with it, okay? He's a talent. He could be a really funny guy. He's made some really successful stuff. Like, you think, what is a woman could be successful? What are you, like, the things that you could make with Crowder and the fact that it, he wouldn't get paid any additional thing for something that has the potential to be so insanely successful. And again, this is additional work on top of the work that you're already demanding and you think, well, it's only four days a week. No, 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 no. It takes so much additional work outside of those episodes. It's a full-time job just to produce that content. And then on top of his workload, you he has a contractual requirement to produce a feature-length product that he doesn't get paid additional anything for? Yuck! It's the key, though. He doesn't have to pay for that out of his... $50 million over the next four years. Uh, so he doesn't have, that's one of the few things he doesn't cover the production costs. He only covers the production costs for his regular show. But Daily Wire will altru altruistically cover the cost of this additional thing. You won't get paid any extra for it. That's already covered in, you know, the contract 50 billion and stuff. Even if this this feature thing makes 50, 100 million dollars and everything, it's a feature product. Imagine if they make a feature film or something like that that potentially has mainstream distribution, okay? They can make millions upon millions of dollars. That's what Daily Wire is going for. They want to produce film, which is great. I love that. But that Crowder would be contractually obligated to do it and not get any extra and it's on top of the workload? Oh, but we're covering the production costs, so you'll be, how generous are we? We would pay an additional amount every year for that. In the case of the, Hang on. Oh, wait. Of the political documentary, we'd give another $1.25 million of production costs. Production costs. In the costs. case of the entertainment, Oh, I was going to say, are they going to pay him extra on top uh, of it? No, but this is just production cost. Depends on how it breaks down, but we'd give between 500000 and two and a half million more dollars. Oh, wait, so, so... So, you know, you're talking about... So, it could make, you know, fifty, hundred million dollars in mainstream if you get distribution for this feature thing. We're so generous, we'll give you, you know, pittance on it. So, they'll give him something. About just this is more than eight figures over the four years in addition to the 50 over the next four. It depends on how much it makes. Uh, like, no, I would say piss off. The only way you would log me into making a feature additional content on top of everything else, if there is a generous revenue split on the profits, okay, and this isn't like, you know, Hollywood accounting profits, the actual money earned beyond production costs, okay, there was a generous split Split and I would be like fifty percent minimum if uh, if I'm the main producer and required to make this. Uh, if I actually was required to make it, just because Daily Wire is covering the production cost, no, it would be like eighty percent to me, twenty percent to them, and maybe even one ninety percent if I was producing it all. Not uh, like, uh, but just because they're pr covering the production costs doesn't mean scripting, filming, editing, production, uh, like the actual like time investment requires to do that. Okay, and the success will be wholly founded on how much effort Crowder puts into it. And uh, revenue split would be the only way I'd ever consider something like that. Four years. Uh, and then E, additional Crowder content. What is this? I don't know, but presumably over the next four to six years, we might come up with other things that either he wants to do. Holy crap! <laughs> so on top of all the things that you are required to do, we'll just o keep that, you know, cracking the door open so to give Daily Wire the right to seemingly demand additional content at their women leisure that Stephen would be legally required to do based on this contract. Like, 
Just like that alone is another thing I'd say piss off. But the, do you see how dog crap this is? Do what we want to do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what Stephen wants to do. He like under this contract, Stephen would be worked off his friggin' brain just to produce the standard crowd of content, and then the additional content Daily Wire is producing. And then yeah, he might want to do additional content, right? Unlikely. Even if he did, Daily Wire would own it anyway because of other contractual things in, in this. Very unlikely he would because there's no incentive to do more because like he has to cover the production costs. And so doing more just means it drains his resources and he doesn't get any benefit, a bonus based on, you know, actually producing. It's, it's, it, this is one of the most dog crap contracts I think I've ever seen in something like this. But look, I mean... I'm sure there's probably worse out there, especially with Hollywood. But no, what's actually going to happen, this legal provision gives Daily Wire the ability to demand additional content from Crowder. We want you to do a whole new segment, a whole new YouTube thing. So we built a, a sort of catch-all bucket. Yeah, a freaking catch-all bucket. For, mm. If we and Crowder mutually agree. Oh, so they have to mutually agree. Why would Crowder be ever... I agree to that if it's not going to get any additional benefit from it. May it says they might get cover. To create right? additional content not currently contemplated, uh, then we'd pay him fifteen thousand dollars a day for that shoot. And again, and that's oh, that would barely probably cover production costs. And if it ends up being insanely successful, he's not going to get paid any extra, is he, for that additional content? A lot of that would be days he was already shooting, so that's just a little extra money in his pocket if we do. <laughs> A lot of that would be days is already shooting. You don't freaking know that. I'm sorry, Jeremy, but the way that you are framing this and just disingenuously proposing, like, things that it would not be the case to produce an additional content as what that, you know, stipulation seems to be describing, it would not be just, oh, you're already doing it. We just continue. It was like... Do something extra. Uh, item six, the back catalog. Um, Crowder will license his entire back catalog including without limitation every past episode of Louder with Crowder to us during the term. Including without limitation. So it's not limited to the back catalog. He will license his entire back catalog, which is in anything is made, basically anything is made. The additional things that, because it's, it's not limited to Louder with Crowder, his show. It just seems like anything that is considered Crowder's back catalog, they get the full license. And that alone is worth a lot. Uh, that just means that all the episodes that already exist would also be behind our paywall during the term. At the end of the term, all of that content that we didn't actually pay for. It doesn't say exclusively or non-exclusively. This would be a very important thing to know. Uh, like, what do, does the, either the content would disappear on the Louder or Crowder YouTube channel, appear on Daily Wire channel, or Daily Wire just gains control over Ladder Crowder YouTube channel, and they basically own it for the ter like for the contract. Um, but it doesn't mean he would be. It means if this is exclusive, he wouldn't be able to license it to anyone else. And I have a feeling it would be exclusive, but it's not stated, which is weird. Every past episode of Ladder with Crowder to <clears throat> actually pay for would revert to, to Crowder at the end of the term. That content that already exists would also be behind our paywall during the term at the end of the term all of that content that we didn't actually pay for i don't like i like jeremy but i he's having trouble speaking confidently here and it, i get it just gives me an impression like is like you know that we actually pay for it feels like he knows this is one of the most dog crap contracts ever and he's drowning in trying to propose it in such a way that it sounds reasonable. And I think for a good number of people that like him, and I like him, I like Daily Wire, who are unaware of how truly insane some of this crap is in this contractual proposal, right? Which is, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's reasonable. But I, I feel like even he is struggling trying to make this sound reasonable. Would revert to, to Crowder at the end of the term, but we would have it in the meantime. Seven, ad reads. Yeah, so we would have in the meantime, so Crowder wouldn't be able to um, display it or uh, show any of any content is ever made independently under his own thing uh, and get profit from it, period. Seems like it. Ten promo reads. DW will have the exclusive right to sell ads on the Crowder content on all platforms, channels, websites, apps, widgets, pages, and lists owned, branded, or... Everything, basically. Controlled by us and on any Crowder 
owned or controlled social channels, email lists, websites, et cetera, uh, including ladderwithcrowder.com. Uh, and it says uh, remuneration for that is included in the fee. So it- Remuneration for all these ad reads are included in the fee, which is the $50 million they pay him. I honestly think the uh, value that they would get out of merchant, maybe even not even merchandising, just the back catalog, uh, the mug club, and the content, as is with just one ad read on it enough, would blow out that $50 million figure, right? The amount that people would need to pay to uh, get ad reads on content that gets millions of views is huge, okay? And so the money that there is potential to be made, like Crowder doesn't like any more than one sponsorship on one of his videos. Good on him, okay? Uh, Look, and I don't begrudge people that do multiple, but it obviously can go too far. And I respect that, you know, he has a a line where he puts and is putting a principle above profits. That's great. That's the type of stuff that earns my respect, okay? Um, That, one, contradicts what he likes to do on his channel. But if they do multiple ad reads at these figures, right, for not just the main content, everything, everything, that alone has the potential to earn 50 million in a year, let alone four years. That can earn nuts by itself. And I think the value to the 50 million is already achieved separate to that. And they're trying to say, Daily Wire is going to keep all of that because you are fairly compensated with the fee we're offering you. Again, I would say friggin' piss off. And see, so what does this mean? Well, this is just how are we going to make first that at least bare minimum 50 million. And if you count the other. This is, this is another mask off in case you didn't know. This is how they're going to make back the bare minimum 50 million. That's an acknowledgement that they could make back the 50 million just on ad reads separate to mug club subscribers, merchandising, and all other monetization things. If you want evidence how dog crap this thing and how friggin' low ball they, they did Crowder with this, that's an admission right bloody there. Holy crap. He acknowledges they could make back their 50 million just on the ad, re- ad reads, let alone all the insane amounts of money and revenue opportunity that he can get through all the other monetization ab- ability uh, ab- availability through the louder with Crowder brand. And they think it was a fair good offer. Other things we were talking about, uh, 60 plus million, plus we knew he was going to negotiate. So you're probably talking about 70, 75 million. Again, another acknowledgement that they knew that what the, the offer that they gave him was dog crap. Well, like we know we're going to make the 50 million back just on, you know, sponsorships. So I uh, like we can, uh, we will do that. We, we can go up to 70 million and would be f- perfectly fine. Like, he acknowledges that they would have been willing to negotiate up to 70 million and they lowballed him by 30 million dollars and it was a fair good contract million plus infrastructure plus marketing uh, at least 100 million dollars we would have ended up spending over the next four years well how, how are we going to pay for all of that he was at least 100 he was expecting it to double Oh, gosh, oh, Jeremy. So, dude, this does not make you look good. Holy crap. One way is we're going to sell ads uh, on all this content. And you know this is how we handle all of our shows. Uh, he has to, item B, Crowder will read the ad copy and promos as requested by us, though he'll have certain rights to disapprove of some ad sponsors. I need a drink. This is hard to get through. You thought I was going to do alcohol. Oh, I'm a good Mormon boy. I don't drink alcohol. What is my hard stuff? Oh, actually, no. The hard stuff. Apple juice. <laughs> um, in various, for various reasons, right? He can approve to, he can disapprove of like 10% of the ones we bring him. He can disapprove if he owns equity and a direct competitor of one of the advertisers that we okay, okay, hang percent on. of the ones we bring in various for various reasons, right? He can approve to, he can disapprove of like 10% of the ones we bring in. He can only disapprove of 10%. Bullshit. 
bull crap. Again, I would say, no, 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 no. Uh, I have the right to disapprove of anything that I don't want to promote. Period. Okay. And he can disapprove if he owns. So out of 10 ads, he can only disapprove of one. Owns equity and a direct competitor of one of the. If he owns equity. Other than that, he has no freedom, basically. The advertisers that we bring him. But point D, if he doesn't read the requested ads within that framework, then the content that he made won't be counted as delivered under the contract because it's all fine and good that he made a piece of content, but if we can't make any money off of it, then we're just paying. Because that's the only way you're making money off of it, through a friggin' ad read, not through the merchandising, not through the, 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 the uh, mug club memberships. This is another disingenuous piece of categorical dog crap, okay? And, and so what they're saying here is if he doesn't do an ad read, they do not have to pay him for the entire episode, okay? And they will still get the money from all the mug club memberships and everything from that episode going out. Every monetized thing that they make, and they will make a lot of money from that episode still, especially if they're able to get ad revenue by some miracle on YouTube. But there's also ad revenue on Rumble and other things like that. They will keep all of that, right? But they won't pay Crowder a friggin' cent of it. Paying him so that he can make a show. We're not paying him so that we can no, no like, i can't believe that they're basically saying yeah you know it's only the the sponsor all the sponsorships that is going to cover the cost of this show for us and that's what we're paying for participate in any of the success of that show he just said that they will not get they will not be able to participate in any success of the show if an ad read or the ad reads aren't delivered on that episode okay even though he knows that they're going to get the mug club you know membership bonuses any birch that might be shown presented or or promoted on the thing or any other multiple benefits you get out of a high quality entertaining show that crowd produces if it doesn't have the sponsorships we're not participating in the success of it piss off eight ownership this is a very important point daily wire will own all of the content created here in and will own all of the DW created channels and brands created by us during the term. And to be clear, we can exploit those channels, brands, and content in perpetuity at our sole discretion. So, acknowledgement right here, they will make new uh, Daily Wire created channels and brands with Crowder. Okay. Uh, they have that opening to be able to do it. It has to be with the mutual agreement, but they, they will leverage it, right? And uh, this also means the feature stuff that Crowder is contractually obligated to make as well. Uh, that's per owned by Daily Wire in perpetuity. They will milk it for whatever revenue they can. It could be continual ro like royalties coming in through reruns or whatever. Whatever ends up, you know, they're making, right? And Crowder will not see a cent of it into perpetuity. Again, I don't like it, like so much of this contract is such dog crap where they get Daily Wire takes nearly everything and gives crowd a s almost spit in return. And they expect this, like, this is a good contract. He, like there's such insane bad faith that holy crap. Oh, I... What does this mean? Well, it means just like all of the back catalog that Crowder would, would have been bringing over, we would have a license to have that all over at Daily Wire Plus during the four to six years that Crowder was here. But at the end of that four to six years, he would take all that content with him. A little bit different with the content that we're paying, you know, tens of millions of dollars for uh, during the course of, that content would always stay with us. We would have a sort of perpetual right to monetize that content even after Crowder would leave. So, uh, wow, I was thinking that was just like the additional content, right? The, like um, the feature stuff, but or this also includes all their Louder with Crowder shows, right? That he makes under this contract with them. Uh, they keep and monetize and own into perpetuity. Not just for the four-year content. Uh, that one, I, I, I would want to talk with an IP lawyer or something like that about that. I, 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 I'm suspect of, of that period. And, and even then, they're allowed to monetize it and gain all the profits and and Crowder wouldn't get a cent. There is no royalty split here um, specified at all. If I go back, um, uh, their sole discretion, they will own all Daily Wire created channels. Channel, but the thing is, this isn't, he talks about back catalog and stuff where this specifically talks about Daily Wire created channels and brands. It really feels like they're going to make new brands and new channels with Crowder and then they get to use and exploit stuff that they force Crowder to make for them forever and share no royalty to him at all, which is outrageous. 
for for what they're they're paying. Like, like there's certain contracts that you could pay a flat sum to uh, own um, an intellectual property they're paying someone to develop for you. Okay, or, or you could do a re- uh, royalty split. But to do to actually purchase flat what someone is producing, you need to pay a lot for that. They're just expecting anything they make that's already under the contract. They mm. well, it means six right. for uh, paid him yeah, my God. deeply as we go. Adaptation rights. All this says is that anything that Crowder says on any of this content, we can adapt it down into written content and put it up at uh, dailywire.com. So, you know. I think that's fine. Um, Basically, yeah, making small clips, promo stuff or whatever. 10 additional DW rights, merch rights. It says DW will maintain the exclusive right to create and sell Crowder and Crowder content branded merchandise. And the remuneration for that's already included in in the fee. So... Hang on. It says Daily Wire will maintain the exclusive <laughs> right to create and sell Crowder and Crowder content brand and merchandise. All the reiterations. Thing- it does not say that that ends at the end of the contract. And in actual fact, the wording implies exclusive right to create and sell Crowder and Crowder branded merchandising, right? Because it says maintain, that implies they will maintain this after the contract is ended and Crowder would not have the right to sell merchandising um, on his own brand after the contract is... Because it's exclusive! They would maintain the exclusive right to sell Crowder and Crowder branded merchandising, maintain meaning after the four-year contract, and because it's exclusive, he would not be able to sell any Crowder-based merchandising. Are you friggin' insane?! Are you with Sean? And then all remuneration for this right to sell exclusively, this right to maintain and sell exclusively, all remuneration is it is in the, included in the fee of <laughs> This is this is like this We that give us your soul that like they might say this was a mistake or anything like that, but the wording really implies that here. Holy crap. Holy... Freaking hell. This wording implies he would not have the right to sell merchandise for his brand after the contract expires for the rest of his life. So one of the ways that we can make money, put ads in a show. One of the ways that we can make money, sell uh, subscriptions around his content. One of the ways that we can make money is be responsible for his merch. Now, that, that would mean that we have to pay for the creation of the merch, pay for the marketing of the merch, but we would own the upside. Teespring pays for the creation of my merch, okay? I mean, they get a cut. doesn't mean they get all of it. Email list. DW will maintain the exclusive right to manage. I can't believe he just breezes past that one. I can't believe this! It's so much worse when you go slowly through it. Crowder! I can imagine him freaking... St- like, if he understands contractual language, which I suspect he does, I, he would... F- I can imagine him flipping out, having a bloody stroke, and just reading one of these things, let alone levels of it. Of course there would be no further negotiation. If... if the fact that they were even approached him with the vague thought that any of like the con thing, these things, uh, when I say any, the, the ones that I flipped out on, that any of like, these things I flipped out on is reasonable on any level shows how insanely bad faith this is. I was like, I would never, holy crap, I don't think I want to work with the Daily Wire anymore, even if they promised me a film. Because like, if they're capable of proposing this, and you know, if he just signed off on it all, they wouldn't be like, holy crap, do you realize what you, you just gave us, you know, merchandising rights, exclusivity, maintain after the contract, basically forever. They would like, you, you shouldn't sign it. We, 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 to- they, would, they would accept it happily. It's insane. From monetize all Crowder email lists during the term. You know, we have an enormous team here at the Daily So Stephen obviously has, is having a big issue with email lists recently because it seems like he doesn't have the email list um, from the Blaze uh, after leaving the Blaze. And uh, it feels like this is just setting up that same thing, that uh, it feels like you gain exclusive right for the, any emailing lists and subscriptions that happen over that term, and Crowder um, doesn't, won't be able to get access. All remuneration from the exploitation of these rights is included in the fee. 
Again, maintain exclusive rights. Maintain, again, implies maintaining it after the contract. It doesn't say Daily Wire will have the exclusive right to manage during the term of the contract. I will say email list during the term. Okay, okay. Okay, so this one actually says during the term. Daily Wire will maintain the exclusive right to manage, grow, monetize all Crowder email lists during the term. It literally doesn't say it in the previous one about merchandising. There's no during the term there. That's all Crowder email lists during the term. You know, we have. So they might just say it was a typo. They should have been during the term in that previous one. But I'll be like, who wrote this? That is huge that you would exclude something like that by accident. An enormous team here at the Daily Wire, and some of them full time think about email. So that's that 50, 60, 70, $100 million social media management. This one was very, something that Steven seemed particularly aggravated by in his video, although I, I don't understand why. <laughs> I would have been using his contract as flipping toilet paper by now, but I don't know why he'd be upset by the way you're reaching this point. Uh, it says DW will have the exclusive right to manage, curate, and monetize his official Facebook, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Snapchat, Rumble, and other social media accounts. Right to manage, curate, and monetize. Curate means approve. Like, take down, put up. I would be like, again, piss off. No, not a chance. Excluding, Excluding. his existing personal Twitter and Instagram accounts. So, so this one would be a tricky one because I don't think it's necessarily unreasonable for a business to want control over the branded um, social media accounts of the brand that they are essentially buying here. This isn't licensing. It's insane. Uh, I wouldn't be okay with that, though. Uh, I, I, Lateral Crowder brand is tied with Steven Crowder. And so anything that goes out on them should reflect on him. It will. Like a public will have it reflect on him. What if Daily Wire spits something out that he doesn't approve or doesn't agree with? Oh, no, we're curating. We're like... Holy crap, right? No, no, I would not be okay with giving anyone else the control over my brands, especially when they are identified so directly with me. Louder with Crowder has his friggin' name on it. Why, why would we exclude some but not exclude others? Well, we're saying that during the term, we have, of course, he puts his podcast on Apple Podcast. We're the ones monetizing the Apple Podcast. So this is just making clear that, yes, if... Yes, we're selling ads in his podcast. The podcast goes out on Apple, Apple Podcasts. That revenue comes back. No, it's not. Exist Curate managed crowd is official. Facebook, YouTube. So Apple Podcasts, it feels like um, posting content. This this feels like it goes beyond posting like videos. This feels like managing community text-based posts and stuff. And other social media accounts. So that'll include... Um, his non-personal Twitter account. They'll make like a loud or crowded Twitter or something like that. Um, a branded Twitter account. Obviously, at the end of the term, he's going to get his official Facebook account back. He's going to get his official YouTube account back. He's going to get his official Apple podcast uh, channel back. Does he get the content and rights uh, like to... Well, no, he doesn't. That's already been stipulated. All the content he made during that term will not be allowed to be hosted by him. And so it seems like that would have to be taken off the YouTube channel that he then gets control back. You know, he, he gains the control again of, uh, because I already said this daily wire has, a, well, I think it was the exclusive right even, um, uh, to own all the content that he makes during the term of the contract. But during the term, again, all those people behind us, we've got experts in every one of these platforms, how to optimize it, how to make sure that you're getting the most out of it. Uh, and we'll manage that and we'll collect the revenue. But not as Twitter and Instagram, because those are very personal channels. You can't manage someone's Twitter. I can't speak for Candace Owens. I can't speak for Ben Shapiro. I really get the impression of Candace Owens or Ben Shapiro or someone. Maybe not Ben Shapiro, because he's got a, probably a bit more clout in there. But someone lower, like Candace Owens or Brett Cooper or someone, posted something that Daily Wire really didn't like. And there's a couple of topics that even if you try and approach it level-headedly, I think um, the uh, Daily Wire would have a big issue with. Like, for instance, perhaps uh, saying something more critical about the vaccines during the height of COVID or or uh, the um, uh, validity of certain elections shortly after certain elections. You, you, you think the Daily Wire would not be like, hold up, all right? Like, I don't believe it. I don't believe that they're like, oh, yeah, you could do what we want, even if we disagree. There's obviously a line. More, I mean... You know, as you know about Daily Wire, we 
we have a lot of disagreements sometimes between our hosts. If I'm wrong, good. I'd like to be wrong, that they'd give all the people that freedom. I don't know. And then there's the like the unspoken kind of expectations. Like we won't ask you to take that down, but we are displeased that you posted that. And so we might just be a bit more snippy or uh, might things might not go as easily and smoothly for you in the company. I have, like this. You think that wouldn't exist? I don't know. I, you know. All I'm saying is that Jordan Peterson tweeted out uh, Crowder's original video and it's gone now. Yeah, I... Even if it was honestly genuine on Jordan Peterson's part, it was his honest, true decision to do, and there was no influence and everything, you can't help but speculate over something like that because of how direct it looks, you know? Yeah, we get this a lot where people are like, you know, Jordan's Twitter has changed since he joined Daily Wire Plus. He's referring exactly to that disappearing uh, tweet from Jordan. Plus, I have nothing to do with Jordan Peterson's Twitter account. I don't have login credentials for his Twitter account. I've never asked him to tweet anything or not tweet anything. That'd be way outside of the bounds of what's acceptable. But you honestly think that there was no influence, okay? Sometimes you don't need to say anything. Um, just expect people to behave a certain way and because you have influence and, you know, and I'm not saying this is the case with Jordan. I'd like to be wrong about it, but um, too much of a skeptic for this one. Uh, because that's a very... Pr the very personal medium, Twitter, very personal social media accounts uh, that we... Yeah, yeah. That, uh, so if they make like a crowd or whatever, right, on, during the term of this contract, they will have perpetual and exclusive rights to continue to create, own, manage, curate, monetize, and sell all social media accounts on any social media platform. And it seems like there's no limitation anywhere in the contract uh, for the amount of social media that they want to make. It's like, oh, you know, you'll get your... Louder with Crowder Facebook page back, but during this four years, we're going to make a Louder with Crowder Lives Facebook page. It's just going to be called Louder with Crowder Lives, uh, and we're not going to post a single thing on the original Louder with Crowder Facebook page. Everything as you make, because uh, we get to curate, we get to determine, that's going to go out on this Facebook page. And after the contract things, we have perpetual, you know, um, uh, right, uh, exclusive right to curate, own, manage, and everything. And so they actually have the power to nuke and destroy. Um, the existing crowd on Facebook, not saying that they necessarily would, but the fact that the contract gives them power to do that is a huge red flag. I would be like, no friggin' way. Because they have the power to ruin all of it and make, you know, replacements that just migrate the audience over to these new ones that they created under, you know, the terms of the contract, and then they get to keep all the exclusive rights into perpetuity. Do you see how vulnerable this makes Crowder uh, and how exploitative it is? We create based on Crowder's yeah. content. And they're going to be saying, because he, he gives a reference like, you know, um, the, what is a woman? Well, you know, we might want to create a Twitter for what is a woman and everything. What is also, what this is actually saying is that it gives no limit to the amount of social media accounts and YouTube channels that you can make under the Louder with Crowder IP, essentially. Uh, 11 exclusivity should go without saying if you're going to pay somebody $50 million. Okay. So this is one of the things that I was going to mention um, uh, that would come up. So there is uh, basically, it's a non-complete clause. Um, total exclusivity for all kinds of content in all media throughout the terms. And all kinds of content. Friggin' hell. Okay. Like, this is one of the more standard business things, a non-complete clause, um, that sometimes I can see a purpose for and sometimes I think goes way too far. Uh, for instance, I, I have guys that work for me on, uh, you know, my YouTube channels. Uh, Night's Watch, uh, they, you know, are, feature a far more prominent role than Shadowversity, but they still appear on that, right? Okay. And standard business procedure would f would be for me to have a complete non-compete clause where they couldn't work and produce any other YouTube content separate to the YouTube channels that they're currently on. Um, and then even then, what it will actually be is a non-compete clause that they couldn't make you, like they can make any YouTube channel they want so long as it doesn't directly compete with the content that we're currently making because you're being paid to make content for this channel, not hold back your best ideas for your own one. And so you can see purpose from it, but even that is too far because I want the people who work for me to have the freedom to 
potentially make their own channels, even doing the same type of content. And so what we've done is a right of first refusal instead for the contracts that we have here at Shadowversity. And what that simply means, if they have an idea for a video, we want to hear the video idea first and give us the right to say, I like it, I want to produce it on the channel. If we say, no, it doesn't fit or we don't have the time or anything like that, they are then free to make that video that they thought was a great idea for their own channel, for their own benefit. And if it ends up getting a million whatever views, I'm thrilled for them. That is friggin' awesome, okay? I want the people who work for me and then move on to be successful in pursuing their other careers. This is why Oz, he worked for us, has now got Team Oz. We've promoted it on the channel and I'll promote it again. Check it out. Nathan has his own channel. He, go check it out. We've promoted it before. I'll promote it again. And Tyrant, okay, he's actually getting a shout out on the Shadowverse video. Uh, I'm not sure if it's out before or after this one, depending on when this one comes out. Is a shout as well because like and if their own YouTube channels get successful to the point where they don't need to work for me, I'm thrilled, okay? And they can support themselves and I want them to be successful. And so yeah, like that I feel is vastly more reasonable than total exclusivity. Holy crap. So this is saying yeah, Crowder can't make basically anything else independently. Uh, it, this locks him in anything he makes for all kinds of content even if he wanted to make a friggin cooking channel or view frozen pizzas uh, on his other dinky channel he makes anywhere else no not allowed okay. or if he does daily while own it because they have total exclusivity for all kinds of content this would be another piss off moment oh there have been so many right wouldn't have even gotten this far but this is just like not a friggin chance and like i said I can understand non-compete uh, to a certain level if it's, you know, you don't want people being the direct competitor. But even then, I feel that goes too far in a lot of instances. Uh, right of first refusal is vastly more reasonable. You're going to have exclusivity. They can't go make content uh, for people who compete with you. You don't pay someone to... But what if it's not competing? That excludes even non-competing content that has no connection or relevance to the main content that you're technically purchasing from Crowder, okay? So... I can't stand how he's disingenuously framing these contracts. It was just, you know, you, you can't have people making compete. No, the contractual language excludes stuff that doesn't compete. All kinds of content. And then he's just framing it like, oh, you know, you can't have them make stuff that compete. That's not what it says. Go work for the competition. Uh, but there's carve outs. Of course, he can go do non-regular guest appearances. If Tucker wants to have him on, uh, if Fox and Friends wants to have him on, All if right, he wants to go, I want to go back to go work for the competition. Uh, but there's carve outs. Of course, he can go do non regular. All right. So, what are occasional non regular guest appearances are not restricted, provided Crowder uses good faith efforts to coordinate with. <laughs> so, it doesn't include, like, if he wanted to start a new YouTube channel on whatever passion project, he loves martial arts, brilliant jiu jitsu, and stuff like that. What if he might have made content about BJJ or fitness or something like that? He has passions for these things. All right. He w this would restrict him from doing that. And they're like, oh, we're so generous because we're allowing him the freedom to do these other things. Like he can appear on Fox and Friends, right? Regular guest appearances. If Tucker wants to have him on, uh, if Fox and Friends wants to have him on, if he wants to go do a hit with Glenn Beck or something, he can go do that. He should use good faith efforts to coordinate them with us. Uh, and this is important. See, he won't have the right to run any personal subscription or donation effort. He can't have a Patreon or a Locals or any sort of paid to coordinate them yeah. with us. <clears throat> he can't have... Why not? Why couldn't he? Uh, what if people wanted to support the individual and not the Daily Wire? Okay. I, I could perceive this coming under, you know, non-compete and then it's a kind of competing thing. But why... I, I, what... They actually, I feel they should have every right to be able to do that, okay? And guess what? The individual, if they like what the Daily Wire is doing with Crowder, they'd support the Daily Wire. But if they don't want to do all the Daily Wire and they just want to uh, support this individual, they would do that. This is bullcrap that it's denying him that. And what if it's like um, separate and it's not compete? What, like, what if he just wanted a, a um, Patreon account for a new type of content that he makes for his fitness channel, Okay. But he wasn't even allowed to make the fitness channel now. And this also excludes him being able to uh, have any personal subscription or donation effort of any kind. Holy crap. What if he broke his leg? And uh, look, he's a wealthy guy. I'm not sure he would need donations. But any type of... He wanted to do a fundraiser or something. Okay. Um, he could not run. But run in, so he can do... Okay, if it's not personal. If it's someone else. Okay. But still, that's dog crap. What if he actually, if there was this unique condition where he needed to run a personal GoFundMe or for something that's happened in his life, right? This actually excludes that dog crap. Have a Patreon or a Locals or who are going to own subscription revenue during 
the term. So I think all this is very fair and very obvious to anyone. You wouldn't pay. Bull crap! It's fair. Don't freaking give me that. And I really feel like that. Like he he had. It feels like he's having trouble spitting this out. And it's like he knows it's such dog crap that is choking on his own words. Listen. The term. So I think all this is very fair. And very very, very, he had to force it out. I've, it really feels like, Jeremy, you know this is dog crap. And it feels like you're trying to save face because, oh, man. And you're trying to, I don't know, pull the wool over people's eyes who do not understand contractual language like this and trying to say it's just standard business practice. <laughs> it's not a chance. Very obvious to anyone. You wouldn't pay somebody $50 million uh, to then comp you know, compete with. It's not a... You're framing it like everything that he does outside will be competing. No, no. Like, it is excluding non-competing content as well. But you're not going to mention that. Have them work for your competitor, and you wouldn't pay him $50 million to have them compete directly against you. Now, here's this section that I know Stephen was very offended by, um, and I think, he, I think he misunderstood and therefore misrepresented. Fee reductions. There's a different fee reduction for all. All right. Already, I'd be pissed off about this, okay? Uh, because you're not paying him more for additional success that he earns over and above this $50 million, you know, investment that you're making. So if you're not going to pay him more, why should he be paid less for unforeseen circumstances, especially if it's unforeseen, right? Uh, in which the contract isn't fulfilled. And by the way, there would obviously be causes for cancellation if contractual terms are not met as well. That's, that's standard, but conditions in which, well, we will pay you less because of any number of these reasons, I feel is actually bullcrap. All those kinds of contents we created. Daily content. Because you're, you're paying for the risk as well. This is part of the thing. If he fails for any reason to deliver 192. Any reason? I think they mentioned that perhaps they allow for sickness, but this language says any reason. If he fails for any reason to deliver 192 episodes of The Daily Show, including any and all ad reads. Oh, would... Episodes of The Daily Show, or if he fails to include the ads that we agreed to, or the... And I've already roasted him for that because you're still monetizing the content massively. And he could read five of the six ads that he was required to do. And because he didn't do that one, they're not going to pay him for the entire. And each one of those ad reads could have been worth $100,000 each, depending on the views that are guaranteed on the video, right? And if he misses one, he won't get it. Well, it's included in the fee anyway. So even though they're monetizing as well and beyond 50 million, okay, he's not going to see a cent of it anyway. But now they have a, a right. To, he doesn't even get a cent of the additional stuff on top. But if he doesn't do one ad read and they're monetizing, getting all this money on top anyway, he won't even get paid for that episode. It'll be reduced from the 50 million. That is friggin' dog crap. The promotions that we agreed to in those episodes, then we'll give a $100,000 reduction uh, every time. W what's that about? Well, again, you can't pay someone any amount of money, but you certainly can't pay them an unimaginably huge amount of money. Again, it's such unimaginably huge. It's like for the realms of money and the thing that you're operating, it's not unimaginably. Not only, it's actually, it's lowballing, and you know it's lowballing. Friggin' hell. For their show, and then not get the show. And then... <laughs> <laughs> the, the word, the language literally says you wouldn't have to pay him the hundred, like you would, you could subtract $100,000 from the $50 million, whatever. Did I ever say 40 I may, even I might be getting those mixed up. You get the figure, right? You get the picture, right? You could subtract that amount. If he misses one ad read, you will still get all the monetization from Mug Club and the merchandise and everything like that. And you're like, we're paying for a show where you have to get the show. No, the language literally said you don't have to pay him if you miss an ad read and still delivers the show. But you're framing it like you're not even getting the show anymore. So what this is saying is, you, you don't have to produce a show every day. You don't have to produce 260 or 250 or 240 or 230 or 220 or 210. Which would be insane if you had to produce a show every day. And by the way, producing four shows a week is already, like, like for the production level, the amount of staff that he has, and the amount of prep time and scripting that is required for that crap, okay? He's obviously run off his damn feet already. And episodes a year, you got to produce 192 episodes a year. You can film some of them in advance. You can stack them up. All of that's content. Only to a certain level that the Daily Wire approves, remember? Played it in there. Uh, you could shoot on a Friday so that you could take two days off next week. But if you don't give us 192 episodes, we 
we can't pay you the same amount of money as if you did give us. That's not what the contractual language framed. It literally said, if even if you missed one ad read, we wouldn't pay you $100,000, okay? And you're like, if you don't deliver us the episode. 192 episodes. So this is just, yeah, you give us 192 uh, times four minus one, then out of your 50 million, we're hitting minus 100. Yeah. And so what he's saying here obviously seems reasonable. If an episode literally wasn't delivered, I would actually feel that there should be a provision to allow a certain number of episodes undelivered for reasonable instances. If there's uh, uh, not only personal loss, personal sickness, everything like that, conditions of the world, it, like any like reasonable thing that should be able to be negotiated between reasonable people, right? Uh, and it should be up to like 10 to 20, I would say, uh, for safety. And uh, and even then, I'd probably say uh, five that don't need to be negotiated. We just weren't able to deliver it. I don't need to explain it. It's not delivered, okay? Um, because what, there are also mental health issues and stuff like that. And then uh, beyond that, there should be negotiated. But then after that, then if episodes aren't delivered, then it makes sense. Yes, of course, you could subtract the amount. But the fact that Daily Wire is going to be monetizing this so much more above and beyond the 40 or 50 million i can't even remember what that figure is now um beyond that opening figure right and they're not going to be like he even acknowledged that the ad reads are going to cover the 40 50 million dollar investment already excluding all the other monetization ability okay and he was even expecting that we actually need to cover at least a hundred thousand oh yeah we pushed it to 70,000 up to a hundred thousand expecting that that's where it was going to go to even though, which proves that it was low balling and it was a scummy uh, cheat of an offer right um even all that like they're not sharing the money of the additional ad reason but they all there's all this other um you know monetization potential and so Missing one episode doesn't mean Daily Wire is going to suddenly not be able to make well over and above the investment that they'll be putting in to get an insane, truly insane level of control over the merchandising, the back catalogue, the mug club subscriptions, all the additional content that he'll be required to make over and above, including feature length products, right? Um, all of that. You think they won't be able to make beyond that and they have the gall to say we're still going to subtract money if you don't deliver one ad read in one friggin' episode? Piss off! Steven said that this was unfair, that he that if he had a sick day or got in a car wreck, we'd dock him $100,000. But uh, I think that's just totally ina inaccurate for two reasons. One, uh, presumably if he was sick this Tuesday, he could just shoot an episode next Friday. <laughs> Which means, yes, if, if the episode wasn't delivered and we still are in negative episode delivery, we wouldn't pay you. Because he's saying by acknowledging that, even if you had to take a sick day off and everything like that, we still expect the episode delivered. Okay. And you'd be... You could just film it another time. Even. He's got an awful lot of extra time in the year. Oh, piss <laughs> off! It's again, it's like, you know, I mean, these episodes are so easy to produce. You're not, it's clearly not a full-time thing. You've got all this free time that you can make other episodes all these other days. Ah, uh, of course he's pissed off. I'm pissed off just reading this. It's like, I don't, you're only working four days a week to produce this stuff. It's such easy. You're clearly not run off your feet. And then, you know, you can't deliver. I'll just make it another time. Where all the, you know, because you've got such free time, you can clearly just do additional content the other week because you're sick and by the way being sick doesn't just take you out one day usually i've freaking had the flu for what a month now and i'm still not getting over it and i've had to be absent from you know night's watch content as a result i'm clearly bouncing back as you can tell but holy crap right and he would lose a hundred thousand dollars per episode and remember it's not just for not delivering an episode it's missing a freaking single ad read to shoot these additional uh, to shoot any episodes to make up. And second of all, it's actually contemplated a little bit later uh, what happens if there's a disability. In fact, we'll just skip right to it. It's, it's item E. In the event of temporary disability or serious illness that prevents Crowder from performing, the fee will be reduced on a pro rata basis, not subject to the fee reduction. We'll still dock you and reduce the amount, even though we will be making well over and above the amount that we're investing into, which is gu almost guaranteed for the level that they offered. Right. And we just won't, you know, reduce it as much if it's for temporary disability or serious illness. Um, and that doesn't include so many other conditions that could prevent delivering an episode. OK. Uh, mentioned above. What does that mean? Well, instead of a sort of punitive fee, because he's choosing not to do the right thing, 
in that situation, you'll just reduce it by dividing the total amount of money contemplated you know, by the number of episodes to just subtract that, which I think is, again, no sick days, essentially. You still get, he will still get docked a significant amount, even for days that it, which is friggin' bullcrap. At the bare minimum, there should be a grace amount of, uh, if they, you can't reasonably do it, that's understood. The Daily Wire is still going to be, they would rake it in insanely over and above what they'll be paying for this. And even if they had to pay a far more reasonable amount, okay, they would still be able to get in the green, okay, even if Crowder wasn't able to deliver one or two episodes through the contract period. And the, and you, he, I can't believe he thinks that we're like we're being so reasonable because you know yeah we're we're not we're not taking as the same amount we're still taking much but we're not taking as much and you could just make more episodes later on I mean you, you're off for a week not off for a month okay and you still have to produce sixteen episodes you could clearly fit that in with your open schedule because it doesn't take like five six seven days to produce four episodes which it probably does right but it clearly doesn't you can just fit it easily. Like, this contract is scummy and bullcrap in the extreme. And the fact that he's trying to present it as reasonable is insanity. Again, incredibly fair. If, if you're being incredibly paid a dollar for every box you deliver, you deliver 10 boxes, you get $10. If you deliver nine boxes... Except that there are legitimate six days that people, like, what... This legitimately doesn't grant Crowder a, a six day, okay? And uh, you might be saying because of the amount, but be, they'd be getting in so much ver more revenue on other revenue sources that they could suffer not getting one to five episodes in a year, okay, due to sickness or health, all right? Like, it's... And by the way, I, like, he, he, probably, he doesn't even get, like... He doesn't get it now, but one of the incentives of a contract like that is to get certain reinsurances and security that you don't get when you're completely independent, okay? When Steven is sick, uh, he will lose money, okay? But uh, like a contract like this, logically should be able to, you know, give him that security that maybe he would still be able to take a day, a week off, right? And not get fully shafted uh, and lose out because a contract, that's one of the, it should be an incentive of the agreement. They're completely withdrawing that. That it doesn't matter if you're sick, right? You, you're going to get nothing, all right? But there's so many employees, my employees, okay? They get certain amount of sick days a year that they get paid full wage while they're sick. And it's a certain amount, and there should be that same level of grace period, a certain amount of episodes that should be just, you know, uh, absorbed, right? And not uh, the crowd should have no penalties for taking need sick days, not be able to deliver a certain episode like that, which is just reasonable. I can't believe that Jeremy is just basically like forgetting the concept of sick leave and sick days and stuff. <sighs> And there should be, like I said, at least a grace period for a certain amount of episodes. I know it can go too far. That's why there's only a limit on sick leave. You get $9. That's a different concept than if you, if you just choose not to deliver it, in which case we're going to subtract a little bit extra. <laughs> like, that is so disingenuously framed, where clearly in standard business, there are multiple conditions which... If you don't deliver that last package, that for you know fair reasons, okay, they're not a state employee would not get penalized. But it's trying to frame it like you know it's just logical, isn't it? And again, you pay somebody fifty million dollars, you should get the work. <laughs> and you know we will basically suck everything dry and loud of the crowd. I'm monetizing it up the rear end, basically bending the whole loud of the crowd of brand over backwards and raping it. Right, um, sucking it right for everything it has with all this over monetization, additional feature content, and, and making new Facebook page, making new brands, and everything like that, and having the merchandise and everything. Right, and you will be. <laughs> And you won't give him a single cent additional over top. Like, you will make back that just in the advertisements, which you already acknowledged. But, I mean, if we miss a single episode, you know. Monthly and quarterly content. Well, this is more valuable content and there's less of it. So the fee. No, it's not. The monthly and quarter. So the quarterly content was going for promos 
and the behind the scenes content with subscribers. That wouldn't, holy crap, that doesn't earn as much money as the core content, the episodes, especially if you have an episode with what, five ad reads in it that you're getting $100,000 a pop in that, right? That's the big money makers. And then you have the mug club and merchandise and everything. To say that the, the singular promo stuff, right, is gonna be earning more, piss off it is. Bull crap! And then they're gonna dox him 250,000 per instance of missing that! In any quarter, including any and all ad, any and all, so it's not just all, any, if you miss a single ad read. Ah, oh, and Daily Wire, an affiliate company's promo read, is approved deemed satisfied by company, treating in the fee per ins per instance! Per instance! And so, including any and all ad reads. So, you, oh. for clarity, anytime Crowder misses a single example of the monthly and or quarterly content without written Daily Wire approval, the fee will be reduced by $250,000. He is higher, $250,000 if he misses that kind of content. Annual content. And then he brushes and over the, you know, per instance part. Holy cr I can't believe he's thinking this is reasonable. That is insane. That is a greater reduction in content that is less valuable than the content you were you know, reducing if that wasn't delivered, like an actual episode. <sighs> the, holy crap! I just read ahead. Listen to this. Well, this is the most important, most expensive content. If you were supposed to have done a complete documentary this year and you didn't deliver it, well, we're going to subtract a million dollars because that's. Piss off! Come on! Right? The $50 million is not even valuable enough to cover the value of the Loud Crowd of Standard content for the four years, let alone the back catalog, mug club, merchandising, and everything like that. And you are expecting him to make additional content that you will reduce a million dollars if it's not fulfilled. And it's not even that. Uh, and that figure that you're paying him isn't even covered in the regular content. I was saying, holy, I can't believe this. Remember, I was saying that that the annual content, which is the, the feature stuff, should be on a separate contract completely that has some type of revenue share to be reasonable. And far from including it in the fee, they will dox him a million friggin' dollars if it's not delivered. That's one of the most important, most important, uh, high value pieces of content that we asked you to make that year. It's essentially devaluing all the standard Loud Crowder content. By the way, the poor guy pr probably doesn't even have the, <laughs> the time and uh, energy to make that, okay? He's probably struggling just to, I know what that's like, to just maintain content, okay? Under the bull crap that YouTube does, which constantly deranks content and screws over. Like, remember when YouTube went dead about a week ago and, and everyone's views flatlined, okay? All right? All my views, when when views started to get tracked again, returned by half. Half, okay? They were tracking fine. Uh, they were all good, and then everything flatlined, came back by half. Surviving under YouTube is so friggin' tough. And then I do have medical conditions and stuff that make it even harder, okay? It's like you're barely holding on to maintain the level you have, right? And then this thing is trying to say, no, 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 not only do you have to deliver everything that you are ready, you must do this high quality, high produced budget annual thing, right? On top of everything that I know just from comparison, Stephen is probably really struggling to maintain. I'm the same. It's hard to maintain and do this job and make, keep it afloat, right? And then they demand more and they will friggin' dox him a million of the amount of money that isn't even worth enough to cover the, the, the actual value of the core content. And no wonder it pissed him off. Then the just says reset. The fee reduces each calendar uh, year. So. Yeah, which means so. you... We, yeah, yeah, like uh, every year it's not delivered, we can dox another million. You know, every year you kind of start over. Yeah, yeah, it is, it's just start over. What does that He's not saying that we could dox him another million every time it's not delivered. You start over fresh. Uh, that brings us to 13, reduction of fee from lost revenue or boycotts. Again, this is one of the points that Stephen really focused on. He says we're enforcers for big tech, that we're doing big tech's bidding, that we're punishing content creators uh, if they run afoul of big tech. And first of all, that's just personally incredibly offensive. It's incredibly offensive to have your friend and ally. He might be genuinely offended. 
I, there's validity to what Stephen's saying here. Okay? And uh, Stephen didn't make it personal. He didn't name names here. Okay? And so now this is something that the Daily Wire isn't known to do, making an emotional argument uh, over just spitting the facts. And this is an appeal, an emotional appeal, that what he did was somehow immoral and offensive. All right? I know he says that Stephen thinks he's doing it, but if, if you really wanted to show that no, we're just going to be talking about the facts and I don't want to try to manipulate you to believe my side and everything like that, um, look, I'll, I'll give him pass because I, I, I fall into that as well, okay? And uh, But still, I, I don't like emotional appeals. I do it as well. You can't help him. Why, uh, in, in 10 years of fighting this fight uh, alongside one another, coming up together, uh, say that you're not sufficiently conservative, say that you're, you're, I think he said in the video that we're worse than the left, that we're, that we're um, doing harm to the, to the conservative audience. And if this is the type of crap in your contracts, you know where it's coming from. <sighs> harm to the country, uh, that we're not sufficiently at odds with big tech. You know, obviously that's ridiculous. You'll see that it's ridiculous as we go through this and I explain it. Uh, it should be it's absurd on its face. We get content strikes all the time. We get demonetized all the time. If that's the case, they never talk about it. I, I personally, I haven't, and this is what makes me really skeptical, right? Everyone who does get hit with their ban hammer, right? They know that they have a supportive community, okay? And you think Daily Wire isn't going to reach out to their community for support if they're getting demonetize. I haven't seen Ben Shapiro's channel um, being taken down for weeks at a time like Crowders have, okay? <laughs> like, and, and if it has, you don't think the fans aren't going to notice, okay? And so where is this demonetization and, and, and stuff, and especially like channels being taken down? Maybe they do get deranked a bit and demonetized, but nowhere near to the level that I've seen Crowder and other people where their channels literally get suspended for, you know, um, lengths of time and stuff. And so I, it really does feel like the Daily Wire seems to have some type of approval or built more approval, maybe not complete, maybe not a free pass entirely, but higher approval than a lot of other conservative channels. And, uh, you know, he's saying that that's not the case. I, I haven't seen it. We get shadow ban. And if it did, you know that your fans would be speaking about it massively and you would be speaking about it to get... Rightful support. When, when actual shadow banning, deranking happens, and everything like that, it's good that the fan you know, fan base just galvanizes and supports it. And you really think da Daily Wire wouldn't capitalize on that? And I think it's good that people do because they need that type of support. But of course you friggin' would. And so this is why I'm like, I, I don't feel this is genuine because I haven't seen spit about that. All the time, just like all conservatives do, uh, we're investing tens of millions of dollars every year into technology to try to create alternatives. That, that's a long-term project. I love that you're investing stuff to make things grow. That's good. But like, like, what relevance does that portion have to them? No one has built anything. Rumble is not a true competitor to YouTube yet. It's more of a competitor than the Daily Wire subscription. <laughs> like, I don't know why you're bringing Rumble in. But Rumble is a platform that's free for anyone to use to upload content where you know, like Rumble is vastly more, you know, impactful in terms of making a competitor to YouTube than the Daily Wire. I mean, I want Daily Wire to be a competitor. Maybe, uh, like, they don't have enough content to be able to be, compete with Netflix or Disney or anything like that. I wish you all the best. I hope. I want, you know, a competitor to be like that. But you know that <clears throat> there's a long way to go with that. I hope that they become one. But right now, YouTube has many billions of people use YouTube. Uh, and many millions of people use Rumble. It's a long-term investment to build these alternative, and Daily Wire Plus is an alternative platform. Not in the way that Rumble is. How many, like you said, and millions use Rumble. How many people are on the Daily Wire? And is it accessible for any content creator to be out of post content and stuff? It's, it's not even in the same kind of genre of platform. And so the, the comparison is a complete false equivalence here. But right now, we all still are dependent for getting our message out uh, to have access to big tech and to, to monetize our content. We have to have access to big tech. That's where the audience is, and it's where the money Okay, so the reason why I'm saying that is to justify the, uh, well, it seems to be, 
you need access on YouTube, which means what? Have you been appeasing um, certain conditions that YouTube put forward? If that was the case, you could just be honest about it, like Tim Pool is. Tim Pool just says, hey, it's the most effective way to get our content out. And so if we to stay in the fight, if I need to avoid certain subjects that I would like to honestly talk about, I will avoid it so I can still be effective in the fight and talk about other subjects that need to be talked about. And then he'll talk about those subjects. He can't talk on YouTube on his, in his private stuff. And you can just be open and honest about it. Because I feel like Daily Wire does that as well. There, were, there are certain, you know, spicy takes that... Um, the wider conservative movement was vastly convinced of that the Daily Wire whole host of, you know, platform didn't agree with uh, and didn't even really like to talk about it too much. Either, either a pushback against it severely um, and uh, and uh, other, you know, electoral stuff or that or don't, they don't mention about it, okay? And that really gives the impression that the Daily Wire likes to um, avoid the no-go subjects that uh, many conservatives actually feel are very valid and should be talked about to maintain access. But he's not talking. He's not being honest about that. Now, that's the impression. I, like not only I, but a lot of people have. Yeah. And if you did that and you're just honest about it, I'm okay with like Tim Pool. I understand that you need to do that. You could just do the same and say the same. But you're not saying that. It's like. It's also where Stephen Crowder has made his entire name. He's the biggest conservative YouTube star of all time. You know, he he put out his video criticizing us in this contract as not being sufficiently. He wasn't criticizing you directly. He was criticizing the terms of the contract and not naming you. And there was still enough, even though uh, it looked like you, there was enough ambiguity to think it could have been Fox or someone. Uh, and so to say that Stephen was specifically just lambasting you directly publicly, no, he was lambasting the contract, uh, the garbage contract that it was, and he didn't go far enough because holy crap, layers upon layers of dog crap in this contract that he didn't even touch on. Uh, conservative, the, the number one place people will view it is on YouTube. Uh, and that's not wrong. That's where people are. That's Well, no, hang on. It is wrong. You don't want YouTube to be the only game in town because they have total control and now monopoly over the, one of the big public squares for discourse. Uh, that is right. You don't want that. Of course they're going to watch it on YouTube. Of course he's going to put it out on YouTube. That's where the audience is. Now, Stephen might respond by saying, yes, but I don't make any money off of YouTube. I have been de- monetized there. Uh, and that's a point that we'll talk about here. Uh, nevertheless, obviously, you and I and everyone, else, when we go to YouTube to watch Steven Crowder, Steven Crowder may be demonetized and he may not make any money. YouTube, though, still makes money off of us. And so in that way, Steven is still driving, he's still driving success for YouTube. What relevance does that have to the point that he's going to get penalized if um, uh, he gets canceled or restricted on, on YouTube. The point is, if it's not monetized on YouTube, right, but the subscribing members and the fact that they're like, he can get very large numbers on Rumble. Did you see his election live stream? Like, holy crap. Okay. And you still want to penalize him if he suddenly can't put that on YouTube, even though he has platforms that he can get crazy amounts of views. That's insane. Okay. He should not get penalized, especially because you have huge monetization ability with his content still, even if it just ends up being on Rumble, right? Because you have all the subscriptions, you know, the mug club subscriptions, you have merchandise rights. And if you have a lot, such a huge audience that he can sometimes pull in on Rumble, that still means a lot of the ad reads achieve this minimum kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, exposure, uh, if you count to get, okay. And the fact that like you, he's not getting ad revenue on YouTube anyway. So why is he getting penalized if suddenly a video gets taken down on YouTube? That whole preamble was totally irrelevant to the point that I was making, or is just basically saying YouTube is the uh, only game in town or the biggest game in town, should I say. And, uh, YouTube benefits off of us making content on there, which is wrong. Like, I really felt like the underlining thing that he was referring to was that we need to maintain viewership on YouTube because it's the biggest game in town, which would make sense if he said that, but he, d he just kind of danced around it. But let's go through it. The reduction of fee from lost revenue, from boycotts, content strikes, or bans from major social media platforms. A, ad drop. If Crowder is boycotted or dropped by more than 50% of his then extant advertising partners, 
seven exit advertising partners. So technically YouTube isn't an advertising partner if it's demonetized, but it sounds like they are purposely including that in it anyway. Even if it's demonetized, YouTube is going to be included in that 50% if it's reduction. So if it's banned off, YouTube is still going to get penalized. That which is, is. Which is insane. If 50% of the money that he's making from advertisers is suddenly gone and we're not able to replace that revenue within 90 days, then his fee will be reduced by 25% until such time as the ad revenue has been restored for a period of 90 days. This is insane. Like one of the securities that you'd hope to get out of contract like that is protection against cancel culture. And that literally undermines it completely. They're like in actual fact, they're enforcing the vulnerability that you already have by saying, well, we now we won't pay you. Because what this is saying, right, if they can't replace it within 90 days, so if there was a big cancellation of a large sponsor that Stephen Al has, so they, the sponsor cancels it, they can't replace it with a sponsor that will pay it as much and it reduces by 50%, um, the fee, that's the $50 million, will be reduced by 25% until such time as that ad revenue has been restored in a period of, for a period of 90 days. And then it would all reset. Stephen says... All the left does is boycott our advertisers. So this just says to the left, uh, your boycotts work and we'll enforce it for you. We will punish the content creator for you. It sound, yes, that's exactly what it sounds like. But this isn't about punishing the content creator. This is about if the Daily Wire is... <laughs> so that's basically saying, yes, but we don't call it punishment. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, we are seeing some gymnastics to jump through these hoops. Even at the price that we offered for it, which he would have wanted much more. And and you knew it was a scummy offer that you'd be cheating him insanely if he accepted. At least a hundred million dollars. You see, again, it's another acknowledgement. At least, like at the very least, the reasonable agreement would have that would have been a hundred million, not fifty million. Insane! You knowingly acknowledge that you blowballed him by fifty million dollars, and you have the gall to say this was a reasonable offer as a beginning thing. Bull crap! That's reasonable for the beginning. If someone approached me that, and so I'd be with I'm, Stephen. One hundred percent. I would have used it as friggin' toilet paper. And so that's probably a compliment to wipe my ass with this crap. Uh, obviously, if the show makes dramatically less money, well, then Stephen has to make less money. One of the securities of this type of thing is actually to protect against sickness and other things like that. And you know that's not going to be the case, okay? Bull crap with that. Like, Stephen especially even if you have grace periods for certain content that isn't delivered, that the level of insane monetization that you're leveraging in this type of thing, that you would make, just make that back on the advertisements alone, which I'm perfectly on board with Steve and saying, you would make it back with mug club memberships and merchandising, period. <sighs> because we're making less money. And I brought this up to Stephen. Uh, but, but if you make more money, he doesn't get any of that cut. That, that logic is such insane, double-sided bullcrap. If you make less money, oh, sorry, if we make less money based on your thing, you should make less money. But if we make more money based on your production, you're not going to get a cent of it because it's all covered in the thing, even if we double, triple our investment. Oh, that's part of the, you know, uh, the investment. If it is, that means if you get to bear all the benefit of it exceeding your investment, you should also bear the friggin' risk. That's the standard. But the fact that you're actually going to penalize it is insane. On the phone, and, and I said, Stephen, if... If your show, if we guarantee you one dollar, one dollar for your show, and the show makes one dollar in ad revenue and one dollar in subscription revenue, then how does it? How does the money work? Well, it works that two dollars come in, you get your guaranteed dollar, we get a dollar. What a bullcrap analysis! What if it makes three dollars? You know what happens? You get the th you get the two dollars, and Stephen gets one. If you make four dollars, you get three. You get Stephen only ever gets the one. You get to benefit from every single thing that goes ex above and beyond the investment, but you don't. You're not going to bear all the risk. In fact, if it goes underneath, you're going to withdraw. You know, and and penalize Stephen as a result. Insane. What do we do? What do you do with your dollar? Well, you produce your show. Yeah, <laughs> he also he has to pay that money that he gets to produce the show on top of it. And you pay yourself. What do we do with our dollar? Well, we market your show, provide all the back-end infrastructure, 
uh, pay for the 200. Not all the back end infrastructure, not for the main platforms where most people will be watching it, like Rumble and YouTube and stuff. You're not paying for that infrastructure. Bull crap, piss off out of this crap. It's like you are paying for some infrastructure, but not all of it, and not for the main platforms which people will be consuming it. 150 plus humans who work to make all of this continue to grow. By the way, we don't pay for one single person more than we need. Uh, there's no charity jobs. We're not giving our money away. Uh, if, if anything, we're understaffed by 50%. We ask more of our employees than any other company probably in America today. We drive people incredibly hard because- Sounds like a crap place to work. <laughs> so like, oh, you saying you underpay your employees as well as- mm. Our resources are limited because we're trying to accomplish so much okay. for our value. Look, and I do get that, you know, resources can be thin. You can only achieve what you can, what you want, but- oh, It's for good. our movement. Uh, so we pay for that out of our dollar, and then we pay ourselves. But, you know, that's how... Of course, but if it gets any more, I, I, this analogy is such conceited, arbitrarily constructed bullcrap because, oh, it's, you, you'd only ever get, make $2, you get one and I get one. And it's like, you, he knows the potential. That's the whole reason you propose this thing, is that the return is, is going to be way more. Oh, that's how it works. I said, if the next day, one of the dollars the ad dollar goes away. Now what happens? Should it be that you said something on your show that caused that $1 to go away? Uh, now, you know who Crowder is, okay? You know what you're getting into. And so you're thinking like, yeah, he will say some spicy stuff. And uh, that's part of the risk. And he's successful. He's successful for a reason, even with the spicy stuff that he spits. And so... Yeah, you also know, what if he says something that triple, quadruples that revenue source, okay? But you're not going to pass that on. But if he says something that reduces it, well, then you'll, you'll certainly pass the penalty on then. You keep your $1 and we make zero? D did he seriously talk like this? I would be insulted because it's like talking to you like you're a two-year-old here. And it's like, are you like... Do you honestly think that I would swallow this bullcrap analogy that you're purposely ignoring important context in? So that wouldn't make any sense. Uh, obviously, <laughs> you would have to lose a little and we would have to lose a little. I said, we're trying to- Piss off, man. But if we make more, you know, uh, we'll gain vastly more and you won't gain anything more than what the contract. We want it all, all the advantage, all the benefits and you to bear just as much of the risk uh, and, and penalties if it fails, but none of the- uh, of emulate the idea of a joint venture. And it's, Stephen said, no. This isn't a joint venture. It's not a revenue split. You're, you're basically buy, trying to buy his soul and, and, and such bullcrap, uh, uh, like unfair, uh, insanely unreasonable conditions. You should lose all the money. It's your business. And I said, well, Stephen, how, how would we have a business? Why? Hang on. I wanna, it's what? your business. Emulate the idea of a joint venture. And Stephen said, no, you should lose all the money. It's your business. Yeah, because you're keeping all the money if it's successful. That's the point of the investment. It is a risk, okay? But if it's a flat fee and, and, you're, and if you're not going to share any benefit above, that means you should not pass on any risks underneath. Eh? It's freaking bullcrap. Yes, Stephen's absolutely right. It's your business, okay? And obviously, there would be things that are in breach of contract. If he says something that literally nukes, you know, the brand and stuff like that, far from... Um, Penalizing, that could just end the contract then, stop all payments at that point, and go your separate ways, okay? And that's just normal. Uh, and when I say normal, that's actually an acceptable norm in terms of contractual things. So you could put in, like, you know, it, uh, if something happens to the point, although you want security, that's the point of, that it would incentivize a creator like Stephen to enter into it, is some level of security against the cancel culture mob. But Stephen's never had to create the company that actually distributes, markets, and monetizes. He has had to create a company that has had to distribute through other platforms, okay? He hasn't had to d build his own distribution platform. So it kind of sounds like he is trying to do that now. Um, well, he will be moving towards that. But what is Jeremy actually trying to get? Yes, you, you've built something. You've borne the risk. That's why you get to gain most of the benefits and you don't have some type of retarded worker co-op where you share all the benefits with all your employees because you've borne most of the risk in in developing this thing. Okay. But there's, there's you know, when you're going into a contract like this, all right, 
If uh, you are going to bear all the benefits, just like with you bearing most of the benefits of building a daily wire and stuff like that, and you don't have to share equal revenue to all your employees, okay? If you're going to get all the benefit for this re being fully successful, well, you're not going to pass on the negatives uh, to Stephen in this condition unless it's a complete, you know, you go bankrupt or, or something like that, or there, something breaks the contract completely, okay? Uh, but, you know, I can't believe he's framing it this way. All of that content. You know, he talks in his video about being one of the only true independent conservative voices. Uh, and I find that incredibly offensive. You know, Stephen, the whole time I've known him, has worked for someone else, uh, has been paid by someone else. Uh, okay, okay. So th this is mostly irrelevant to the contractual discussion and, and everything. And look, I, I do think Daily Wire is somewhat independent. I do feel that they pander a bit more to the conditions that YouTube sets and stuff and other social media things. Uh, that's just based on my observations. That's the impression I get. Um, and uh, look, I think Stephen was speaking emotionally, and I, I can't even remember if that was his exact wording. Uh, but if it was, okay. Um, there's, uh, there are other truly independent conservative voices, but it's one, of the, it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest. Then he was paid by CRTV for a number of years, which was owned by a billionaire. So this is all like uh, the contention that he said is the only true independent thing. And uh, I don't really care about this debate. Uh, this part of the debate. So I'm just going forward. And he didn't necessarily have to be profitable. And he doesn't know for a fact that he was profitable. This part's a dumb argument. It's talking about, you know, um, you're working for the Blaze and everything. You don't actually know your profit. Like, of course he was. Come off it, especially with the Mug Club and subscribers and stuff. Because, as he has said very publicly, this is just seems like a disingenuous, pointless argument, and it's completely relevant to the point Stephen was making. And so I don't. Re what is the relevance here, apart from trying to uh, like throw shade on an argument, undermine credibility, even though it's it's a dumb argument that. Um, Jeremy's making here. All those companies, none of them really shared all the information about what was happening with them. So Stephen feels very certain that his show was always profitable, but he doesn't know that his show was profitable. <laughs> Such a dumb, pointless deflection. Like, you know it was, come off it. And even if it was, you know what it became was. of that profit? Most of that profit almost certainly was reinvested into... <sighs> It paid for people's jobs, okay? Like there were people getting paid, and that's personal income, and it contributed to the overall profit, profit, you know, of the business. And so to say that none of it ended up in people's pockets for benefit, depending on their salaries and stuff. So not all of it was put into, uh, you know, um, uh, reinvestment. Growing the infrastructure and growing the technology and growing the marketing and growing the compliance. That's how business works. If we're going to make one of the biggest investments we've, ever made in talent, which is what we were offering Crowder here. It doesn't matter if it was the biggest you've ever made, it matters if it was actually worth what you were asking, like, you know, trying to get. And you've acknowledged it was not by an order of 100, but like you were expecting it to at least go to uh, 100 million. You offered 50. Uh, <laughs> So the point that it's bigger than you is completely irrelevant to the actual value and fairness of your offer. So there's no point bringing it up apart from trying to sh like obscure that fact that this is actually such a huge amount we're offering and uh, uh, it would be so unreasonable for anyone to turn it down. An amount of money that puts all of our investments at risk. I mean, if it doesn't work, you're it's part of business. <laughs> Who would, have, who would have thought? You're not going to be able to make that kids entertainment content. You're not going to be able to make that. Uh, those. But the whole reason why you're entertaining it is because you know that there's a much higher chance of multiplying that, you know, investment. And which you even have acknowledged that you were willing to go to $100 million on, right? You wouldn't even entertain it if you were at least confident about the good likelihood of getting a full return, if not making vastly more. And that would even if be even if you had a reasonable contract, let alone friggin' just raping him for every single thing the Loud of the Crowd of Brand can do, from the back catalogue to the sponsorships to spewing it with, uh, with uh, uh, where did I say sponsorship, sorry, back catalogue, the uh, subscriberships, the mug, 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 mug club, and then spewing it with all additional sponsorships and stuff, and then the additional content you'll be demanding on top of that. Of course, you would, you would be trying to milk that golden cow for all it's worth. Daily Wire is quite good at, at that.
And so don't give me this bull crap that it's like, oh, the, the, the risk means that we're entitled to penalize you if things go wrong. <laughs> No, because you're not offering many benefits if it exceeds beyond uh, the initial investment. So you bear the risk. That's part of business, and that is fair. I, I can, that's why the people who bear the risk are entitled to all the profits. Isn't that funny? But you don't want to bear all the risk, but you don't want to share in additional profits of the success. You want to bear minimum and basically still it's highway robbery for the amount that you're actually offering. All of that takes resources when you leverage 50 60, 70, 100 million. Again, again, he is another acknowledgement that he was like, yeah, yeah, you're worth up to 100 million at least. <laughs> but you offered 50. And this was a, this is a, you know, a uh, good, you know, genuine uh, um, in good, offer in good faith, of course. Million dollars. Uh, you're taking an enormous risk. You're putting all of that at risk. You don't do it cavalierly. You do it because you believe, and I do that Steven is worth it, that he's incredibly valuable. Exactly. So why are you saying, oh, all, the ri all this risk means that you we have to penalize you if you don't do everything we say and we need to take all the rights away from you and control everything. But it is still a huge risk. There's also a time factor. He might drive all that revenue, but what if it takes a year or even 18 months to bring over those- It's part of friggin' business. Yes. But if once it comes in, that's the return. Mug Club subscribers to get those advertisers spending, right? Well, you're losing eight figures a year in the interim while you're, or seven figures a year in the interim while you're doing that. But but you're going to keep all the additional profits beyond that, you know, um, uh, once you recover the investment. So, so that, that's fair. You can't just say, we're going to pay you $50 million even if the show doesn't bring in any money. Yes, you can. that's the agreement. <laughs> that's not punishment. First of all, 25, 50 million minus 25% is not punishment by the standards of any human being in the world today. <laughs> Hang on, 50 million minus 25%. Like, my math might be a little shoddy, but in what, you're at what, 12 million? Like, that's a lot of money! 12.5 million. And, and, you're saying that you can, like, you're saying that you can uh, deny $12.5 million from a $50 million contract if he doesn't, like, if he gets, what, cancelled off of YouTube for a week or a month or something like that, or if you can't recover, um, uh, what was it, the exact percentage? But that that is insane. That is a huge amount that you are penalizing him for getting cancelled Oh, I, for other people's things. Yes, that's reinforcing and penalizing for cancer culture and incentivizing people to go after him. 25%. And I can't believe he, he's actually trying to say no reasonable person would think. I, I Listen to it. Today, right? That's not, is not punishment by the standards of any human being in the world today, right? I, I yes, it is. You're penalizing him 25% on something that technically might be completely out of his control. That is insane. And you might say, oh, it is in control, like, to speak freely and stuff, and say, like, normal, like, even tepid conservative talking points, like, the definition of a woman, perhaps, or something like that, right? Yeah, people try and cancel for that. And your condition is, like, completely separated to the context or the validity of the thing he actually says. It's just, if you end up getting, I uh, cancel or one of these things happen, right? Flat 25% reduction. If his boycotted or dropped by more than 50% of his then extant advertising partners, that is 50% of the revenue from those partners, right? Uh, so it's not being answered off of YouTube, but it's the advertising partners. Isn't that interesting? So that, that sounds like uh, the sponsorship advertisers. And he could be getting loads, insane amounts of, say, Mug Club um, mem membership, you know, donations and stuff. He'd be getting loads of merchandising things. But if it's the advertised revenue that drops like that, that can penalize him 25%. 12.5 million from a $50 million contract. Only needs to happen four times, and all the money is then withdrawn in a contract. Do you see how insane that is? For a period of 90 days. So if it like happens 90 days and then it happens again after that 90 days, that's why like, I think it, by the reading of this wording, it seems like four times in consecutive 90-day periods could 
penalize him the entire contractual amount. It's insane. Completely. Is not punishment by the standards of any human being in the world today, right? I, I can't believe he can. So like, where does he think he's saying that? 25% is a full quarter. Like, what? That's not punishment. That's just reality. He would still be being paid millions and millions of dollars. I, uh, I can't believe. Again, it's the whole framing that, you know, we're paying you millions of dollars, so you should be, you know, just be happy yeah, because any uh, like demand that you are actually worth more than that is clearly ungrateful. The whole framing about this is dog crap. It's actually very manipulative. And we would be actively working with all those people that we're paying out of our cut to go find new advertisers to replace it, at which point he would be making his money again. Same with the content strike. That's, uh, that's not clear he would be making his money again, but doesn't that mean that does he get the money back that was penalized? Like, if any major platform, YouTube, oh, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, issues a content strike such that Crowder's content cannot be monetized on the platform. He's not monetized on YouTube anyway. What the freaking hell? Then again, there's this 90 day concept. And again, there's this 25%. This is insane. Like with the amount that you like Crowder has been already been demonetized on YouTube, right? This is almost guaranteed by this contractual stipulation when it becomes a contract, right? It almost guarantees that he will lose 100% of the contractual amount of money. All well, it has happened four times. Gee, how many times has Crowder been demonetized in the last four years? He's almost on permanent demonetization. And so there'd be no security. Like, like you would be insane to accept this contract with something like this in with from Crowder's positioning. Okay. He gets demonetized all the friggin' time. The whole thing of Mug Club was to protect against that. And this contract takes his Mug Club revenue and is almost going to guarantee that he would be robbed of uh, like 25, 20, uh, four times over, 100% of the, uh, the contract money. What are you smoking, Daily Wire? Production. Now, Stephen, when I spoke to him, he was very upset. He said, I've already been demonetized on YouTube. That's the kind of thing in a negotiation. You scratch through that with your red pen and you say, Stephen's already been demonetized from YouTube, so we can't start the deal at minus 25. So why did you include it? Like, you know who you're dealing with. This is supposed to be a friend, right? Uh, like, and it's a, it would be a very important client. And you're telling me, you do not have that basic level understanding and you and and this is the thing once again if he simply missed it and read over it you would have happily included in the contract he's saying this is like if you just came back to us we would have easily crossed it out but if you didn't we would have actually kept it in and be win for us like friggin bull crap you have to already have anticipated that and that would have been fine no 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 you should have anticipated this it come with a good faith offer this is so not good faith. It's insanity. It's just a. That's just a very. I'm common. losing. I'm losing. I'm sorry. But if he were making a significant portion of his revenue on YouTube, and he lost that revenue, it's not punishing him to say you will make less. Yes, it is by the contract because you're making him bear nearly all the risk. Then why? Were, like, where's the security for being partners with you? He's got less security in this contract than out. We're all going to make less. The real punishment would be if we took all the hit, continued to pay him guaranteed money, whether his show- That's standard. That is actually what should happen for someone who has the op opportunity to get all the benefits if it succeeds the investment. Who makes money or not, and then we lose the business as a result. And now no one pays Steven anything, and no one releases Steven's content. He has to go build it all from scratch. The only like reasonable thing, if like, something happened to the point where the lateral crowder contact just ceased, okay, and stopped being made. That would not be grounds to like withdraw. You, he would keep all the money up to that point, and then the contract would be, you know, default broken and it would end there. In crisis, ban. The crowder content cannot be released on any of the major platforms because of its content being banned from those platforms. Then we'll reduce the fee if YouTube 20, if Apple 20. <laughs> like 20%. 20%, 10 million, 10%, 5 million. Like these percentage figures are huge chunks of the overall offer. If Facebook 10, if Spotify 10. It is. You, you, are, you are punishing Crowder for like actions that some random, you know, uh, content creator at any of these platforms, I don't know. And if they heard that, hey, I can screw Crowder over, make him lose 20% of the revenue of his thing, they could ruin him. Just like, whoop. Ban, you know, and it's happened to him so often. 
Like, it's insane that you would put this in the contract when you should have the knowledge of how often he gets banned. And so this is basically guaranteeing that he will lose all the money from the contract agreement. It's like, oh, you should have just brought it up and we'll take it out. No, it should have never gone in the first place. The fact that you would even entertain the idea and have it present in the contract shows that you would never risk going into business with these people because it shows you what they're willing to take you advantage of if you just miss out on it and it's anything, these things slip under the radar. Same kind of concept. If the content simply cannot appear and therefore cannot not only be used for marketing, cannot be used to grow the brand, also can't be monetized, well, we can't pay him the same as if it was. Bullcrap. The whole thing, one of the advantages of the Crowder brand is that the it's grown to a point where it can be very successful off of YouTube because it has mug club security and that it has such a huge, you know, now um, viewership on Rumble and things. And he's trying to say, oh, no, if, you, if, you, if, you don't, if you're not on YouTube and Facebook, well, we'll, we'll take 20 and 10%. Out. If you're making 25% of your money on YouTube. But uh, it's not. And now YouTube is permanently gone. Well, you, you can't make that money anymore. It's not punishment. This is yes, it is. I can't believe he's trying to frame that, especially in, you know, a contract like this, which is, should be for, like, security on his behalf, uh, offering Crowder, because... You have the content on the Daily Wire platform still, okay? Isn't there a reason why you didn't release What is a Woman uh, for general viewership to get more subscribership? So if Crowder got banned off of Facebook and everything under this contract, that would just push more subscribers to Daily Wire, okay? And the fact that it has the potential to actually get you more money in, in being banned because fans love to support their creators, which is great. It's awesome that they do that. And there's actually potential that that could lead to greater revenue. And you want to then rob him of 10 and 20% in each case when you could actually be earning more as a result. It's, this is clown world. This is... This is really what it comes down to. Stephen's philosophy seems to be, I deserve to be paid millions and millions and millions of dollars whether my show drives the revenue or not. He deserves to be paid millions and millions of dollars because his show will drive the revenue. And if it drives it beyond that, you get the benefit. And if it's not, you know, you made a poor investment. That's the risk of business. But you don't want to, you don't want to bear the brunt of that. And you're trying to throw it all back on Stephen and it's bull crap. That's not a business relationship. That he's not looking for a business. You're not like this isn't a relationship. This isn't like a revenue split or anything like that or a partnership. This is a flat buyout for four years, which makes you basically own him, and then you get to keep control of the, the merchandising and any like uh, platform brand based on crowd that you make with him during that time. Uh, this is an insane uh, like oh, <laughs> like controlling dictatorship kind of contract. It's, you you basically try to own his soul. Give it your soul, right? <sighs> you know, at the very beginning, we thought maybe we could do like a joint venture with Stephen where... That would have been better from the get-go. Okay? It's actually, I... That would be the... That would incentivize Crowder to try and push and make more content. Like, because if he gets direct return based on performance and growth and increase, that would just incentivize him to reinvest and push more with the flat fee model that you're doing where you are literally will charge like you because he has to bear the cost of production producing any more will just eat away from any money he's earning because of the flat fee that i i can't believe you actually thought this was a better option than a joint revenue split we have the same relationship there's no guarantee of money and if there's more money he gets a cut and if there's less money he gets a cut that, that that's so much better <laughs> Uh, but we knew, no, Stephen, at his level, you know, his history, his his um, his experience, he's, he just needs a big guarantee. He's earned it. Th th this golf is, I can't, how can he think that is a guarantee? It, it leaves him insanely more vulnerable and on the line and requiring verse, vastly more, like, expenditures on his behalf than a revenue split. Uh, like, that, that that's the opposite of what you're achieving with that. There's no security at all with this. But the revenue split, there is security because whatever level of success he gets, he gets an equal like benefit, you would hope. And if it's less, then he gets paid less. And that would actually achieve your goals, wouldn't it, as well? Like, like what he's saying here is categorical bullcrap. But we still have to replicate in the deal some measure of that shared responsibility. And that's all this was meant. No, 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 no. Because you're not sharing, you don't have a shared 
benefit. Just Crowder isn't going to get any greater things apart from the flat fee. And so, like I said many times, it's bullcrap that you are pushing on the risk on him as well. To accomplish. You say, well, it's the same in the end anyway, because you're still telling him, if you say something YouTube doesn't like, we're taking away your money. Well, no, if, if YouTube would be the one taking away. It, that's irrelevant because YouTube isn't even paying him. You're actually saying you're going to reduce because this $50 million fee is supposedly to cover all the revenue from everything, merchandising, mug club memberships and everything like that. And you're saying if YouTube, but because it's already banned, you have to pick something that actually is more. But what's the other thing that uh, could earn sizable amounts of money, right? It's not Facebook or anything like that, but let's just say banned off Facebook because it was included, right? You want to reduce the amount of money that he's able to earn from everything, including the Mug Club memberships, by a full 10%. Even if, and he would be earning a fraction of revenue from Facebook content, but if he's banned from that, you will reduce and rob him of money from all the other revenue sources, merchandising, Mug Club memberships, and even ad reads and stuff like that. It is scummy to the extreme, but that's what you're proposing that he deserves and should be penalized that amount because you're obviously earning less when being banned off Facebook wouldn't really lose much money at all. Boy, the money. We're just saying that we can't bear the entire brunt of that. But it's even, I think what Stephen's uh, suggesting here is kind of even more disingenuous than that because I actually kind of. <laughs> Sorry, him calling Stephen disingenuous. Came up with this whole concept by watching Stephen Crowder. I mean, I mentioned it before. Stephen created this idea of piss off YouTube segment at Mug Club. And I saw it and thought it was genius. I thought that was a genius thing, and I implemented it at Daily Wire because I was inspired by Stephen, who, again, very talented guy. I don't see how this makes Stephen disingenuous for having massive issues with the fact that you're going to penalize him to insane amounts. And it was just demonetized. It was demonetized, but also banned. Like you demonetized on one of these platforms, or also banned off of one of these platforms, like Facebook or something like that. We'll penalize you 20 to 25%. Okay. What, like, how is he disingenuous like, for having? a very valid issue with this. And the comparison you're making, I don't see the relevancy at all. Guy, very smart guy. This is just meant to say the same thing. Hey, I want you to be thoughtful about what you say on the free part. <laughs> no, no, we want, you to, we want you to censor yourself more on the platforms that have an issue with it. That's, that's the translation of what Jeremy's saying here. Doesn't mean I want you to say things that aren't true. Doesn't mean I want you to say things you don't believe. Doesn't mean I want you to bend the knee to big tech. What it means is I want you to preserve the revenue as best you can, preserve the audience as best you can. By not saying the things that would get you demonetized. So then, yes, he wants you to self-censor more. And then tell people there's a reason we're building these multi, 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 multi-million dollar platforms. Uh, there's a reason we have subscribers. It's so that there is a place where they can't take our voice away. They can't tell us what to say. So what should he do? He should go on YouTube. He should talk about the things that uh, he talks about. And then he should say, listen, there's... No, no, no. You don't want him to talk about the things he talks about. You want him to only talk about the things that YouTube will let him talk about and then direct people onto the platform where he can be more free when we should actually be pushing for more free speech on YouTube, not just handing it away and bowing. And I, I know that there's like... You're forced to do that in certain areas. Tim Pool's open about this. And this is about as open as you're willing to be on that when you could just be flat out, you know, thing. But you can still kind of nod, right? As like, you know, um, uh, and push back here and there where it's reasonable. And sometimes, sometimes, guess what? Sometimes you do need to actually state what is true, even on YouTube, risk it, okay? And not self sincere yourself because it's wrong what YouTube is doing in disallowing people to voice genuine concerns over certain, say, medical you know, injections or something like that, um, which yeah, they're fine with, but you know, they, they were legitimately censoring valid, truthful things that, and that was horrible, that was friggin' disgusting, okay? And uh, good on people who were willing to try and push back a bit against that. And the people who get demonetized and even banned for it. They're martyrs for the cause and good on them. And Jeremy's saying, don't do, don't do, don't do, there should be no, like, and I understand people who do feel they need to, you know, not push the line, but Jeremy's basically saying here, don't push the line at all. Uh, some new study came out about uh, the COVID vaccine and I want to talk about it, but these bastards at YouTube won't let me. Come over to Mug Club at Daily Wire Plus. Go over there and talk about it. And in that way, we keep, we keep growing his brand, bigger and bigger audience, 
more and more people. But this is just, you'd want him to self-censor, yes. We have those- to, to YouTube's guidelines specifically. Revenue opportunities and Stephen is free to say the things that he wants to see. I don't- Not on YouTube though, just on, on the areas where, you know, he's contractually obligated or allowed to. No, why when he read this, he couldn't see that. <laughs> I can't believe you haven't denied or contradicted it at all. You've, con you've only confirmed what it is, what Stephen was having an issue with, right? That, yeah, you've, Jeremy literally wants you to not say anything that could get you demonetized or banned on YouTube. Never push the line, never actually say the truth because you could just direct him off to the off platform. And I can get where he's coming from, but to say that this is a contractual obligation and we're not, we're not you know, supporting the censorship by contractually obligating you where we will penalize you, dock you up to 25% at times if you get, you know, demonetize or banned for it. Yeah, we're not, we're, we're honestly not supporting YouTube's policies at all, guys. I don't know why when we talked about it after the fact and he was very upset with me, he couldn't see it. But I find it- Because you're confirming it. Deeply offensive that he won't give me the benefit of the doubt and even more offensive that he felt that he needed to air uh, our disagreement about this section. He aired a disagreement with a contract proposal, not a disagreement with Daily Wire, okay? And try and framing it that he was airing dirty laundry or a, or a grudge he had with the Daily Wire is disingenuous. Publicly. Uh, Stephen's my friend. I, he's my ally. That's, it's just a low move and I know I'm sure no. he thinks he's standing on principle. I'm, I'm, Jeremy what you're doing framing it like that as a low move is the low move the low move that is actually happening is in the action of you claiming it's a low move when Stephen went out of his way look I admit when he he dropped the line about all the sponsorships and promoting gold or something like that that's where I was like oh he's, he's talking about the daily wire I still had doubt though I was like maybe it was you know Maybe it was Fox or something. Uh, but still, he didn't go all the way. He, he did try <laughs> to um, not say I presented as a beef between him and the Daily Wire. It was a beef between him and dog crap contract proposals, which absolutely this was. The problem is, you might even think that, first of all, friendship is a principle. You might think, yeah, but some things have to be more important in the public space than friendship. I don't know if that's true, but let's say that it is true. Of course it is. <laughs> like, some things means that they're, like, if it's not some things, that means there would be no exceptions. There's no principles that are more important than friendship. I mean, this, like, he is so desperate to try and paint himself as perhaps the, the wrong done party and the victim here, right, that he's willing to just deny such a blatantly obvious truth. Or like, I don't know about that, but perhaps it is. No, it's obvious that there are obviously some things, some principles that are more important than friendship. You could go to any extreme example, right? You know, oh, my friend is doing terrible, terrible things against children and stuff, but I can't, you know, send him to the, like, report him to the authorities because friendship. Like, obviously there are. And he's like, he said that maybe there is, no, 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 the fact that he would not be willing to just acknowledge such an obvious truth here to try and present the, the, this, um, you know, situation in a more charitable light on him is insanely disingenuous. You have to be right. If you're and he is! <laughs> you're going to burn one of your friends the way that Stephen burned. But he didn't burn you directly. He was trying to call you out get public awareness of a, a serious issue that is not just pre like dog crap, bull crap contracts thing is some stuff you see everywhere. Okay. And just because it's the business standard, it doesn't excuse it. And the way that you try and shift the standards by making public awareness of it. Good on him for doing it. And he wasn't raking daily wire over the coals. He didn't even say who it was and framing that he was is daily wire actually trying to cause the beef between Crowder versus daily wire now. And us. And Stephen is wrong. No, he's not. I am not an enforcer for big tech. I you literally, <laughs> everything you says confirmed it, okay? If he signed a contract with these stipulations, it would literally be enforcing him uh, by penalizing him for getting demonetized or banned off of YouTube, Facebook, all these big things, right? That by... 20 to 25% of times. That's a type of enforcement through penalization.
I am trying to maximize the reach and revenue of my hosts and my company. By enforcing censorship. <laughs> because no company spends more money than the Daily Wire directly marketing its talent. We spend tens Irrelevant to the point. of millions of dollars every year helping our talent grow, marketing our talent with real dollars. We spend tens of millions more building technology, tens of millions more on staff and support, building expertise so that we can over time build a completely parallel system, a completely parallel economy. Well, that's news to me. I didn't think Daily Wire. Tri Parallel economy is like its own. You need your own independent payment system to rival PayPal and stuff. I, if they're doing that, great. All power to them. I haven't seen any announcements about that. That is not a day's work. That that's irrelevant to the point it is making. That you are enforcing big tech. You're trying to say we're just trying to maximize our, our profits by, yeah, in like. It, it's one thing to just say. We need to play ball and censure ourselves so we can still get the main platform, right? By, by putting it in contract and requiring Stephen to do that, okay, that is a type of enforcement. That's just, you're, you're saying you need to operate in the same conditions that we do. And it's the penalization specifically that's the enforcement to the point where you will deny him, essentially rob him, of tens of millions of dollars. That is a generation's work. That is the work that we are engaged in. That's why we've had so many successes. You have been with us for so many of those successes. And I feel like Crowder really threw us under the bus and cheapened that. No, he didn't throw you under the bus because he didn't name you, okay? And there was still enough you know, ambiguity to, to have questions and everything. You're throwing Crowder under the bus, especially like by framing it like there's some really disingenuous tactics that were used here right they did such a huge amount of money money again like uh, what we nobody uh, personal think uh, robbing uh, stuff and we're uh, like wow wow um and discredited all of it in saying that we're enforcers for the very people who hate us the very people who shadow ban us and demonetize us and give content strikes against us all the time that's, you've just confirmed that. When all we're saying is, no, let's be smart about how we fight them. You can you could say that without robbing him of tens of millions of dollars if he gets penalized by them, okay? That's such bullcrap because, yes, you could try and say, let's play smart, all right, without the enforcement and penal penalizing him, okay? That's the issue. Not a pro I don't have a problem with people trying to say, play smart like Tim Paul or something like that. You're not doing that. You are enforcing it by robbing him of millions of dollars under the contract, which is already getting robbed for being, being slowballed so much that it is a type of enforcement now. The rest of this document, you're welcome to read it. Uh, it's just legalese. And what it says is, if we decide to move forward, this isn't the whole document. We're gonna have to have a longer document. We're gonna have to negotiate these topics. Um, let's have a look. If Crowder accepted them, they would have, oh, okay, no collaboration, we'll just move forward. Until the time of such long-form definitive agreement becomes fully executable, there is no binding agreement between the parties except for those matters in this section under X15. I'd be, in oh, so th that's, this is this one. Con confidentiality, the parties agree to the terms of this term sheet. So he didn't sign it, so there's no expectation of confidentiality there. Confidentiality? When I tell people about uh, the deal, he didn't sign this, so he... Of, of course, he'd be insane to sign He doesn't it. have those confidentiality uh, requirements, although I certainly expected some political or... Uh, no, 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 bull crap. I guess personal and professional courtesy of him not... What, what about professional courtesy in not trying to just offer the most disingenuous bull crap, like insane contract options available. I know this is not technically a contract. This is uh, terms for a contract that they would like to, you know, or they'd be happy to have accepted if you sign. And yeah, like this is the type of crap that needs to be exposed because it's prevalent. It's just how business is done, right? No, no. So absolutely good on him for exposing it. Uh, going and reaming us publicly for making. He didn't ream Daily Wire and framing it that way is trying to make a, you know, antagonist and um steven's whole thing was that he hopes that the people involved would fix it change their contracts and that seemed to almost be like an invitation of 
if you acknowledge your wrongdoing personally to Steve and say, we would never do this, this or that in the contract because we understand that it was pretty scummy and stuff, would have ended there. Wouldn't have had to have been out in public that it was the Daily Wire's contract. And people would speculate, people would think, but there's enough you know, suspicion that it could have been Fox or anyone else. Um, and uh, and he could have saved. So this is such a terrible way to respond. It makes Jeremy Boring and Daily Wire look really bad. And it looked like my opinion has changed, especially going this in depth, because I, I would not want to go into business with Daily Wire at all now. And that's unfortunate because I actually kind of would say maybe there's an opportunity in the future with my expanding, you know, uh, franchises and stuff that um, we could pursue pitching a film. We have a short film adaptation of my book um, that's still under production. And that has a potential to be used as a, as a, as a kind of um, test you know, thing uh, to pitch for larger projects. And Daily Wire was on the question mark. I wouldn't want to now. Unless, oh, look, hopefully they'd change. It'd be great if they do learn from this because they're doing good things and I want them to, to keep doing good things. But the fact that they're had that, like willing to do this type of crap, it is a horrible, horrible look. I, I don't trust them, okay? And uh, not, not for the fact that they were even willing to entertain contractual stipulations like this. Even an offer that he didn't like. I don't owe Stephen a job, and Stephen doesn't owe me a show. We opened up a conversation in good faith. No, 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 this was not good faith. We made an offer. He didn't like it. Now he's burning us? He's <laughs> burning the contract as it rightly deserves. Uh, that brings me actually to what happened after. I sent this over. I did get on the phone with Stephen. Normally, this is the stage where you say, I like this, I don't like that, red line, red line, red line, and we move closer together. I've already covered it like that, if you, especially if you're dealing with a friend, but if you're just being honorable and respectable, you offer something that is fair from the get-go. Instead, Stephen said, I'm not going to redline this. I'm not going to have my agent respond. Good on him. This deal is garbage. Mm -hmm. You need to start completely over. Yep. It should start complete. So he wasn't cutting you off completely. He's like, start over and make an actual, like, sane offer. So he wasn't cutting you off. He was still willing to play ball, but he was just saying, stop being insane. What are you on? What are you smoking? Get off that and start actually acting responsible. So this does not make Steven look bad. I said, well, I'd like to talk through why we do it. And he listened for a little bit and he said, well, you're just wrong. You don't know anything about business. My business model is the right business model. I don't know what he was referring to in his business model, but I'm far more inclined to agree with him at the moment. Uh, and of course, that's unfair because Stephen hasn't run this part of a business before. Stephen likes to say, I'm only on the air because of Mug Club. But Stephen couldn't tell me how many subscribers he had. I said, how many subscribers do you have at the place? He, he said, I don't know. They don't tell me. And, that, and I'm sure that's true. He said, but I'm confident. I guarantee you it'll be 350,000 on day one with no marketing. I don't know if that could be fulfilled, but it would be high. Like you, you think there wouldn't be a very large kind of um, support for Steven Crowder with the fan base that he has? I hope that's true. But I can't take that risk. But you're not risking nothing. You know that there's going to be a very huge like benefit to it. That's why you're even entertaining the offer. I've never seen that to be true. I've never launched any talent with zero dollars spent on marketing and picked up you don't um, he has crowder has the marketing ability come on a third of the total subscribers that the entire daily wire has built in eight years in business i hope i hope steven's right i hope he makes third of the, you're, you're obviously counting the subscribers from multiple channels okay and not acknowledging that most of those subscribers are probably duplicate subscribers where someone, you know, who subscribed to Andrew Clavin is also subscribed to um, Brett Cooper as well as other things, and you're probably duplicating. And so to say you're sh overshadowing Crowder by that much, nah. Unseemly amounts of money and is able to continue being an important voice in the movement. <laughs> He says unseemly amounts of money when he, he's acknowledged that the reasonable offer is he's lowballed him by half, okay? Where this offer should be 100% increased. 100,000, 100 million, sorry, was the reasonable offer that you've acknowledged multiple time. But it's an obscene amount of money. So I'm going to frame it like you're just being, you're being greedy, right? For years and years to come. But that's not a risk that I could take. Stephen implied that he not only didn't like this $12.5 million a year number that I offered him, but... 
that he thought it should be closer to $30 million a year. That's $120 million over four years just for Stephen's show. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Like, Jeremy, you said that $100 million is probably where the negotiation would have gotten to, right? And it was totally unreasonable to ex to try and demand all these things on top of the content, the core content that he's able to produce, which is then allowed for a crowd to show. Yeah, that actually seems reasonable. I would still have to spend those tens of millions of dollars uh, every year that I told you about on things like marketing and infrastructure and technology to support the show, the part that Steve... The Crowder has to cost the bear the cost of production, though. That's the big, big cost. And you get you get to invest as much as you wanted to, you know, the promotion and advertising thing. Uh, but Crowder promotes himself a lot anyway. Uh, but of course, like, this is so, such, you know, bull crap. I, I'm comparing it to publishing because every publishing has a kind of um, committed marketing budget. If it's a big one, like smaller kind of deals usually get less of marketing budget. And the amount that people are willing, or the publisher is willing to commit to publishing is actually an acknowledgement of their faith in uh, the book that they're, they're bringing on. Uh, but they don't say, oh, you know, because we're going to be putting in like $30,000 in, into the marketing budget, we're going to have to subtract that off of you know, your initial offer or payout. <laughs> so you... <sighs> Stephen's never done. As soon as he said that, I knew we'll never get to a deal. I can't, I can't guarantee thirty million dollars a year. I didn't know how I was going to pay for fifty. I thought not that he isn't worth it, but that's a big risk. One hundred twenty million dollars is an incalculable risk for a company uh, our size. But even though he's acknowledged it would have gone to hundred million, and he says later on it would have gone higher. And again, I'm not saying Stephen isn't worth it. I hope he is. I hope he builds his own business. He'll make a ton of mistakes. He'll find out that he's wrong about a lot of how. <laughs> this comes from such, uh, I don't know, like it feels like an elitist position, but we're saying he's going to discover how business really works. No, that's bull crap because there's a lot of things have how the standard way business work that shouldn't work that way. It's actually dog, dog crap. And so I think Crowder is probably aware that, you know, a lot of contracts are pushed to be like this and good on him for trying to change it and exposing it for the absolute astounding disingenuous I, I can't call it criminal but it feels like it, it feels like I, the amount of stuff this type of contract is trying to squeeze out a crowder is feels criminal the business world works they'll learn and he'll grow exactly you see that he's wrong about a lot of how the, the, the business, business world, world works see this is just how the business world works and you'll discover that i think is already aware of it doesn't mean you should accept it screw that they'll learn and he'll grow because he's a smart talented guy uh, and i hope he gets to a place where he's proving me wrong and he's making all that money. But that just was not a deal that the Daily Wire could possibly make. And we'd have to pay it even if he lost all the revenue? Yeah, that's the risk of business. Or even if he lost enormous chunks? You would get to keep all the profits that goes above it. Of the revenue? It was just an impossible situation. And so, so this is interesting, right? By reinforcing that $50 million figure as such an insanely high figure that is so, you know, an obscene amount of money and everything like that, that's like small little um, plants into the audience's mind here to try and set a contrast up to the $130 million that Stephen came up with to make people feel like that's unreasonable, okay? Even when Jeremy has actually acknowledged multiple times that through standard negotiations, it probably would have gone to $100 million anyway. And so... <sighs> this video is actually very manipulative. Steven said, we're going to throw this deal out. I'm not even going to mark it up. not going to negotiate it. Start yeah. over. Send me a new deal. Good on him. And that's actually him not pulling out the plays. Like, start over. Send me a new deal. So. <laughs> and because of his talent and because of our friendship, I thought about it for a minute. Talked to my partners about it for a few minutes. And I just realized what I already knew in my heart, which is Steven's not a team player. That's not a knock. Team player. Like, you got to be a team player to let us take advantage of you, um, you know, to, to push things further, right? Right? It's just, it's, it's, he has an enormous individual talent. But he's not going to be happy unless he's out on his own. So I called him up. I said, you don't know that. I mean, he, like he's worked with a lot of people already. And granted, it seems like he didn't like the situation with the Blaze. But the fact that he's entertained working with, you know, other groups before shows that he is perhaps like certain elements of security that is offered by working with other groups or, you know, organizations. I said, hey, 
we're not going to send a follow-up offer. We want you to hear it directly from me, not from lawyers and agents. I said, but the kind of deal you're looking for is not the kind of deal that we can make. And then a week ago, in January, Stephen called me. And he said, hey, man, uh, I can't unsee this contract that you sent me. And I said, well, it's not a contract. It's a non-binding term sheet. It's a conversation starter. But... But you would happily have transferred all these stipulations into a contract if he put up no objection and just say, yeah, let's go ahead. So don't try and deflect like that. And I, I honestly, I, I've had, <laughs> I, find it, I didn't go into this video expecting to like, you know, defend Crowder so much, but I'm really looking into the contract slowly, bit by bit. I, I, to begin with, I was just, there was surface level things that I was annoyed with, but really breaking it down like this, holy crap. I, I understand it. I get it completely. I would be pissed off for a long time about this type of contract, especially if it was playing on my mind that this is the type of stuff that they probably try and propose and weasel out of other less aware individuals. Um, it seems like they're getting taken advantage of. And he told me his perspective on it, that we were not paying him what he's worth, uh, which, that we don't understand. He, which Jeremy knows. That. His great business mind and that he's it's going to go exactly the way. He doesn't understand his great. I think mm. <laughs> that's obviously a, a disingenuous paraphrasing of the, I guess, the tone that he perceived. But he, the way that he thinks, we're all going to be proven wrong. I said again, I hope that's true, Stephen. But that's not a risk I can take. And then he said, and you're just an enforcer for big tech. You're hurting young talent. I said, well, Stephen, first of all, no two talent in our company have the same deal. That's not reassuring. Every deal is different because there's different circumstances. This is the kind of deal you make to protect a nine-figure investment. Really? Because uh, that does not like... That's the kind of disingenuous deal you make uh, just to protect your own ass and get all the profits and benefits from it and not share any benefits if it goes further on. It's scummy in the extreme. Oh, my goodness. You're right, it protects, it does more than protect the Daily Wire. And uh, just the fact that they're willing to entertain so many of the things in this, you know, proposal, right? R like, clearly they have done similar type of stuff in other contracts. And uh, people who are just uh, less aware that, um, you know, how unreasonable some of these things are, I bet many of them got slipped through very close to how unreasonable these conditions are in many other contracts. You can't pay nine figures in expenses, even if the revenue dry, dries up. That, that isn't possible. It's not prudent, but it also isn't possible. <laughs> I think it is possible, but that's literally the whole point about this investment risk. And he wouldn't let it go. He was very angry. And Good on him. Uh, I got very flustered. I didn't expect him to be calling and laying into me the way he was. I'd never experienced it before. Uh, I didn't make the best defense of... Uh, the deal that I probably could have because I was so caught off guard. I mean, well, what shocks me is that I, Jeremy thinks this video is a great defense because this is only confirmed not only a lot of what Stephen was criticizing about this proposal, uh, you've outed yourselves as being the ones doing it, which is not a good look as well, and it's made it all so much worse. I mean, I'm, I made a, a deal, especially the insane deflection and. Oh, the multiple attempts to justify some of the most insanely unreasonable bullcrap in this proposal as perfectly fine. He sent defense of the structure of it wait, because wait. I was so caught off guard. I mean, I made a, a decent defense of the structure of it, but, uh, but I was really taken aback. I don't want to be the guy who three weeks later, Stephen or someone else says that it was the Daily Wire and you feel betrayed. Like, why did these guys leave me out to dry? Uh, I appreciate your impulse to defend us, but we don't need to be defended. <laughs> it's a really bad look. This contract is awful, and oh, far from admitting any faults, you've basically doubled down, try and deflect and enforce that it's every everything is fine and good here. <sighs> this is a fair <laughs> offer. It's an offer that would have been negotiated. I would Bull crap is fair. <laughs> 
had a Robin of like 20, 25% for things getting demonetized, which happens to his channel regularly. You're going to steal his merchandising rights. And by wording of the contract, it implies that you can maintain those rights exclusively after the contract expires, right? You lowballed him the amount massively, expect him to do insane amounts of work on top of the work he's already doing that is not even get, a pay, get any additional revenue or benefit from it. And then there are multiple ways in which he will lose hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars if he can't deliver certain things, if he gets sick or anything like that, when he's probably already overloaded with the workflow on top of that. That's fair! Would have paid him more? The fees would have been lower? Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's an offer that would have been negotiated. Would've I been. would have paid him more. He openly acknowledged that we definitely would have paid him more, but we didn't come with a fair offer to begin with. That is acknowledgement. The offer wasn't even fair to begin with. The fees would have been lower. Fee would have gone up. Uh, penalties would have gone lower. Number of work days probably would have shrank. He would have done a little bit less content and we would have inched our way like this, either to a deal or not to a deal. Uh, that's not how Steven chose to operate. That's because the way you're operating is dog crap. You proposed a it's basically a highway robbery proposal with such vulnerability where you take all control and benefit and screw him over completely based on what you were offering there. Oh, and expect, oh, this is just a fair, this is how you do it. Uh, and now we find ourselves here where we're having this public dispute. You made it the public dispute between the Daily Wire and Crowder. Crowder didn't out it was the Daily Wire, all right? Even though I thought it was, I was still thinking maybe other people, like multiple times. So don't frame this that Stephen is causing the issue, okay? He actually tried to keep it. Uh, and he said, like, you know, I hope you change. Um, don't make him show the receipts. And then you showed all the receipts that he needed. And it doesn't, just confirms everything of what he was saying. I'm having a public dispute with my friend of the last decade, which is uh, one of the saddest things I've ever faced him uh, in public and professional life. It's just a horrible thing. But I do owe it to those of you who are out there defending us. I owe it to Daily Wire Plus subscribers to say, yeah, it's our, it was our offer. I'm proud of the offer. I think it was innovative. He's proud of the offer. Oh, this, is, this is one of the issues that I've noticed with the Daily Wire, where they have gone too far into the never accept fault or admit your wrong camp because they think if you if you ever apologize, the left will just eat you alive for it. Apologies never actually do any good. And I honestly f discovered this in my replies to Andrew Claven on his incorrect statements about uh, women and sword fighting. And I replied on my YouTube channel, Shadowversity, sharing historical context and real world context and stuff like that. And he got lambasted and he doubled down um, on it and even made worse statements in his second, um, you know, response to it as well. When I actually, I first reached out to the Daily Wire directly to have a conversation with Andrew online. To not, I didn't want to do, I, I, you know, a takedown reply video. I want to actually talk to him, share the historical context and have a conversation. I emailed him through the Daily Wire, got a response and they said they passed it on to him. Okay, I still have the emails. Um and uh, nothing happened from it. He didn't no no res and uh, no um, uh, response to chat about and everything. And so then I made the videos. And a year or so later, someone actually sent a a, a comment getting him to uh, um, uh, you know respond to it, where he says me by name, where it says people online like Shadowversity has responded to your thing. What are your thoughts on it now? And he still said incorrect information, which I responded to once again on that matter. And uh, I was doing, and I did my very best to try and be charitable to his position, acknowledging the parts where we agreed on. But in something that was so blatantly false and incorrect in the statements we were making, that there is no, you know, um, uh, correction. Uh, there's no admission of fault at all when it was so clearly incorrect. Uh, you can check out my videos for that. But that seems to be consistent amongst the day. Like this thing right here like jeremy what he should have done is acknowledge how dog crap so many of this contract stuff is right that's the thing but he's doubled down and said no it's fair it's innovative i think it was meant to make sure that we could mutual it was our offer i'm proud of the offer i think it was innovative that makes him look so bad i think it was meant to make sure that we could mutually succeed I don't need to tell you that we're committed to fighting the left. We fight the left as hard as anyone. You might say, well, you guys are wrong sometime. Ben was wrong about this one time, and you were wrong about that one time. And yeah, we, 
We don't claim to not make mistakes. Have you ever done an openly, uh, or maybe you have it. I'm, if they have, good, glad I'm wrong. But I haven't seen an open admission like I was wrong specifically about this, where you make a dedicated video to correct in, in, inaccurate information. Uh, do it. Maybe there's like offhanded little corrections here and there in videos, but if you wanted to actually truly make the correction, you make dedicated videos on the subject and stuff. And this just seems like another point of evidence that's like, this is not what you guys do. This actually isn't one of our mistakes. <laughs> this is a great, respectable author. Oh, made piss off it is! Oh my goodness. This is gaslighting in the extreme. This is like trying to convince people that don't understand contractual language that this is perfectly fair, right? And it's trying to justify it as just standard business practice. It is not. No way near close, any way, shape, or form. And the fact that there are some contractual things in this that are standard practice in business just means the whole system is broken, doesn't validate or justify it in any means. To a good friend of ours, a mega Friggin talent, bullcrap. Right? And now it's been misconstrued and is being wielded against us kind of as a cudgel. Look, honestly, as you deserve, you're, you're digging your hole deeper. This is just like, yeah. Uh, and so just wanted to be transparent with you about it. I'm proud of the deal. I'm proud of what we do at the Daily Why? Wire. I'm proud of the fact that we publish diverse voices that don't always agree with each other. And that means that you're not always going to agree with everything that every one of us says every but I can tell you with a clear face, I'll put our conservative bona fides up against anybody. I'll put our uh, hard work, determination, and success rate up against anybody. This is the thing. You, you actually didn't contradict Stephen's point about you enforcing censorship by penalizing Stephen and probably will penalize other, your other you know, employees, uh, big voices and everything, for doing the same thing. I mean... I think the more conservative, true stance is to let people say what they want, truly support free speech and not penalize it. You run your business, but if you want Crowder to, to be a partnership and, and things like that, you know who he is. And I'll put our audience and our fans and our Daily Wire Plus members up against anybody, any day. We are moving the ball forward. And it's unfortunate that Stephen said otherwise. We need him to succeed. We need him to be big. We need his whatever he does next to be huge. You just need to know that he was wrong about this. He wasn't though. <sighs> you need to know that we didn't betray you. We didn't betray the conservative movement. We didn't, we won't. We'll look, keep look, I don't conflate what they're doing here to betraying the conservative movement. And look, I do believe they hold some honest and true conservative values uh, and things, but what they've done here and when that contract was legitimate dog crap okay and it, it was underhanded all right um and uh, now this is actually very manipulative in the video response as well and so that deserves to be called out um and look i i still like the daily wire i wouldn't want to go into business with them now um and they'll probably hold that to me if he, I, I, if they change their ways i'd love to pursue our possibilities still because i think it's better to work together of course and uh, i still think daily wire still make good stuff oh yeah fighting and with your help we'll keep winning and there we go okay like that is genuinely so much worse when you really break it down bit by bit oh my goodness it is not a good look it really is not good at all. I, oh, look, will they, I, I would be great if Daily Wire did actually learn from this, but look at it, it's like, we're, we're not wrong, you know, Stephen Graham is going to learn from it, and we're just going to be continuing doing our business, and that's, that is such a bad look on Jeremy Boring, and I've liked that guy, I, I, I still like the guy, depending on, I guess it'll be interesting to see what they do going forward, because the best true result is actually to acknowledge the dog crap that's in that contract and not excuse it by standard business practices and that you were just going to negotiate. And Stephen literally said, come back with, to me with a better offer, and they didn't. So Stephen was still willing to play ball, but they're like, no, we're not going to do it. And it's because he did set a baseline, uh, but they didn't apologize or acknowledge that, yeah, we approach you with one of the worst kind of contract proposals you could probably get. We did it on purpose, expecting that you would, you know, negotiate higher. Uh, but even that, like, even that, that's not good enough because you should acknowledge that that's a dog crap way of going about business, okay? If you're going to give someone a contract in good faith, you offer them 
the reasonable deal f- first. That should be standard business. And by anyone, when you see a contract where they offer you a dog crap contract or contract proposal discussion, right, and it's got crap like this in it, that should be a massive red flag. Because what that means is that they're willing to take advantage of you if you're naive enough to not see it as the disaster, you know, apocalypse contract that it would actually end up being. And I, I, I would hate to do business with anyone like that. Uh, and guaranteed that, unfortunately, this is the result. Because they've been willing to propose stuff like that, you know there's been naive people that have taken advantage of that have locked into crap, dog crap contractual stipulations like that. Unfortunate. Still, thank you very much for watching, guys. And uh, I look, hope to see you on the next uh, video here on The Watch. And as always, stay watchful.